Ah, it's like the first time I've ever streamed. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn my mic on. So, guys, I thought it'd be a good idea to go back in the day. You know, back when, you know, life was easy. Things made sense. I was a flat earther. So, I thought it was odd, you know. Uh, pretty sure you guys have all heard it a thousand times. Uh, me and Jose talking back and forth about, you know, coming of Glovers again and the reaction of flat earthers. And, and one of the things that, that kind of goes up in waves is these questions that I get. Um, like I was, I was talking to Jose on one of the streams before and uh, matter of fact, let me, before I get into this, say what's up to you guys. Cause uh, realistically, a lot of you guys, some of you guys have no idea. Matter of fact, some of you guys have no clue what Sean as a flat earther was. You didn't know me. Some of you were, were around GPS. You've been around a long time. Um, and and Char Charlie's been around. These are the pe Those people, they saw Sean the flat earther. Um, but uh, before I start that, let's go ahead and say what's up. What's up, John? I think John is... Uh, passed out by now what's up crash You're always talking about food always what's up sean hawkins long time no see my friend samuel smith who seems confused by something what's up uh what's up demonic gps trollimator minimator man man blah 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 crash and burn what's up sean What's up, Trish? Oh, yeah, um, as I was saying in the chat, I was kind of typing away when I was getting everything started. Um, it's like I, I, I've seen your name around. I saw you in a few of my comments, and I appreciated those those comments also. And also, uh, I just kind of been hearing about how you've been triggering Arwen, and I, I kind of heard little bits and pieces uh, about uh, you uh, getting under Riley's skin and these type of things. So I, I kind of just wanted to know who you were. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in a respectful way, I didn't mean that like, who the hell are you? But uh, yeah, so uh, what's up, Fred? What's up, uh, Charlie, as I said? Um, see who else is here? Down this list. All right, I think that, oh, Haas, how you doing? And I think that is it for now. No, 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 hang on. Almost to the list, almost to the bottom, almost to the bottom. Yep, I think it's the same people that have been here. And I was right. Okay. So, like I was saying, oh, what's up, Travis? So, like I was saying, um, a lot of people, what's up, Lori? My apologies. A lot of people have been asking um, a lot of these questions about, you know, why? What made you? And it, it's going to, from the beginning to the end of my Flat Earth experience, you know, people, what made you a Flat Earther? What's, you know, why did you change? And it's kind of one of those things where you, I get so many these popped questions in so many random places that there's no ever there's never a place to record it there's not a situation where it can be recorded you know and um it, it i thought hey why not do this again i'm gonna do I, basically what i wanted to do tonight is kind of just free ball it i guess you would say q, q a if you guys had questions about why i became a flat earther um why i left flat earth um in general and and or what, what do i what do, what do i think about everything now um those type of things if you got those that's cool um i'm going to open the panel i still have to start it up like i said i was rebooting everything so i wasn't 100 percent ready like i should be but yeah that's that's, that's one of the biggest things I, i've been wanting to do i kind of was i really would have liked to have had uh, jose uh, join me on this because um, I'm sure he gets a lot of questions and uh, it's kind of one of those things where if you haven't experienced it, it this is what it's going to be like. Let me see. Oh, wait, hang on. I may not be able to use it at the moment. Hang on. Do, do, do. I got to do something. My account. What do you do with all that? I haven't done that at all. All right. It's gonna take a second, guys. Um, basically, what I was blah, blah, okay. What I was saying is, is that um, there's a lot of these questions that could happen, and, and people don't really ever get a chance to uh, hear why or hear what makes a flat earther, for that matter. Um, I do believe that, for the most part, it's almost the same thing that happens um, to become a flat earther. Um, 
Hang on, because I think I have to do the old school way. Yep, I think we're going to go old school, guys. If you don't know what I mean, one second and you're going to see. So, I'm going to go to my YouTube. I haven't had to do it this way in a long time. Yeah, so basically my whole, my meets, uh, account thing ran out and or something happened with it but i'm too lazy and i don't have time to obviously go pay the damn it's like 12 bucks or something maybe i'll do it while i'm where i have it a regular hangout i'm gonna go ahead and do the regular old school hangouts or am i nope i don't think i hang on matter of fact let's not do let's not be hasty so, um, what we'll do, hang on. Okay, so if you guys are going to say something to me or ask, make sure you guys tag me because I'm looking at the chat. I just want to make sure because I see a rapid random uh, comments, so I'm not really sure who's talking to who, but I'm going to deal with this account thing. Once I figure out how to get there. Okay, so I'll do it while I talk. I apologize. So basically, um, but for this stream, what I wanted to do is kind of answer your questions. Um, basically, get to the bottom of this why. Um, and, and how I feel about it now. Because as far as I'm concerned, I got an issue. I, I, it's gotten worse and worse, and a lot of you guys have seen the progression of this anger. But um, I, I honestly thought that there must be the truthers out there like myself who, who, who honestly thought they knew a lot more about the globe than, than, than we, we do and found Flat Earth. What the fuck is Flat Earth? Mind you, yes, I was a conspiracy. I, I am. A conspiracy theorist i i 100 think there are conspiracies to be uncovered do i think i'm going to be the one probably not um but at the same time uh who's to say there's not an opportunity somewhere somehow it's ridiculous to think that our government loves us oh they said they love us so much so much no it's kind of hard to imagine that that these powers that be wouldn't use that power to their advantage. Wouldn't use Intel to, to get what they want. I mean, on a regular scale, people do it every day. Why wouldn't you do it if you had mass power? You know, they've done many studies of putting, you know, um, adults or teenage kids or college kids um, into these situations where a leadership role becomes a job or, or a role. And every time they do this, they found that the people with the most um, power tend to abuse this power. So what happens is uh, we have to uh, basically figure out a way to control that power. Now, do I think we have it figured out? Obviously not. Kind of find that hard to believe to even imagine that we got that shit figured out. Um, I mean, what do we do? Just search. Hopefully enough people hear about it and then they start asking the questions themselves that's what i think a conspiracy theorist wants i don't think anybody thinks we're really going to be the one that you know unravels everything finds that one document that proves everything we've ever said is true it's not going to happen at least i know it's less than likely but i enjoy the researching and i get to learn a lot more about it that's kind of what led me into flat earth so like i said i um Hmm. Okay, so like I said, it's it's one of those things where uh, I ran to flat Earth, and all of a sudden, it was this thing, this conspiracy, so to speak, that I could solve. Dun dun dun! 
found a conspiracy, I was going to debunk. No, I was going to debunk Flat Earth, but I was going to debunk Flat Earth in five minutes. This is going to be taking me 10 minutes. Then I was going to go back to the research I was doing before. Um, what ended up happening is, is I argued a lot about our globe um, and, and what we what we tend to hold in our brains about it that we learned in school. Because, of course, unless you're like, you know, one of those... You know, space fanboys like Red Red's rhetoric. You don't really remember everything you learned about space in NASA and all the other things and that you learned in school. You kind of filter some of those out as the years go and the party starts. You know what I'm saying? Um, so one of the things, one of the things that I, I I strive on when I do my research is. I need facts behind this. And a lot of the time that I was researching for stuff, I, I, I thought I knew what I was doing. I was like, I'm the shit. I ain't worried about this. I got it. There's no way anyone's going to gonna fool me in any situation. And this is really how I thought when I found Flat Earth. Um, then all of a sudden what happened is, is I, I found a group. Uh, a lot of some of you may know uh, you've been exposed or he goes by question everything now um, I found, ran into his stream and I had an opportunity to talk to these crazy people that thought he was flat and the first thing that happened is, is I got triggered <laughs> like, um, and, and basically it became a situation where I was like this is this is what I learned I'm telling you guys because this is what I know. I know I'm right. And I didn't ever dive deep into my research into these things, into the globe, into science. And so what ends up happening when you've never come across globe phenomena on a regular basis and how they're worded, how science words these things, um, your perception of, of anything you read, anything you see is, is, again, not something that you can trust on a 100% basis. Um, so what ends up happening is you interpret it how your brain wants it to. What ends up happening after that? Oh shit. Everything I thought I knew as a globe, NASA, space, I didn't know. Not that it was wrong. Not that it was even a conspiracy against some, you know, the world. It was more that, oh shit, I thought I knew. I didn't know. Now I need to fill in these blanks. Now, a couple months may have passed. I think about three months had passed. And this had been a regular basis where I'm arguing with these people about different things. Um, and what ended up happening was I was, I was respected. I respected them, the people on the panel. There was none of this back and forth bullshit that goes on now, drama. It wasn't like that. Well, it was, but it wasn't like it is now. I came around when it was a, more of a flat earthers were very, very standoffish. They weren't ready for a fight. So what ended up happening is, is um, I, I got to be there witnessing what you would call the Glovers being an asshole. Trolls. Uh, this is when, you know, Timmy was doing this. Timmy and his group were doing sniping. And, and uh, you know, then they had the other porn bombers. Like, it was all that shit was going on. But it was coming from one side. One side only. Um so on to be as honest as i possibly could um i didn't want to be considered a glober at a certain point now by this time i'm now honestly questioning how you guys could possibly know we live on a globe and when i go outside you know it does look flat but here's the thing that that made me a flat earther and i want everyone to try this right now um i'd like you to close your eyes don't worry, I won't pop up anything in the screen. You, don't close your eyes if you're with someone that may smack the shit out of you for uh, listening to me tell you to close your eyes. But anyway, yes, here nor there, please join with me with this. When you're thinking of where do we live, your first thought is probably where you are now. Not inside, I mean outside. You go outside and you look around. What do you see? You're going to see your, your local environment, your neighborhood, some trees. If you're out in the desert, you're not going to see some desert, but you're not going to see much. Um, but what you do see, I'm sorry, guys, it is flat. It looks flat. My brain tells me it's flat. Okay? That's, that's here nor there. I'm not a flat earther yet. Okay. Keep your eyes closed. 
Now, you've never really looked at the sunset and sunrise, so in your brain, you can't remember exactly how the sun rises and sets to just describe it. Like, I remember, I know, I'm not, like, I never saw one. Just that you don't, it's not something you're thinking about on a regular basis. So the second someone goes, bam, asks you about how that works on your globe, shit, you draw blanks. Those blanks are filled in by what they're telling you. Now, this is obviously something they've heard because none of them have, you know, gone out and spent years studying this. They're telling you, like they were told, they're flat earthers. It worked. So what happened to me was, is I started feeling all those, what, how, where do we live? And trying to imagine it in my brain. And what ended up happening was I couldn't. For the first time in my life, I actually thought, where the fuck do we live? And can I muster that in my brain? I sat back and I thought, hey, this is the problem. I can't, I can't do it. If I can't conjure up how the system works, how am I going to tell these people that they're wrong and it's not? Oh, well, worst came to worst and everything happened. I, I came out and went, hey, fuck you guys. I, I'm a flat earther. But it was more on the basis of, hey, uh, I don't want to be attached to this whole globe thing and these assholes. And I found a group of people that are willing to have a good discussion about anything, even if we disagree. So let's say this. The first part of my flat earth uh, time, I was undecided. I was on what you would call that fence. Well, here's what happens. You now know that not all science is correct. You now know that science does not prove anything or can't prove anything. Still, you don't know the details. But in the long run, what ends up happening is you run into a boatload of propaganda stuff. You run into a boatload of... You run into a boatload of uh, just phenomena, basically, that happen that you don't know about. You can't explain, so you have to look into it. But when you start looking into things, you will now you'll realize right away that uh, the internet is filled with everything: the truth, the lie, the, the propaganda, the false flags, the hoaxes. I mean, everything. I mean, put it this way: there are thousands of people in this community we have here. Who can tell if a shooting is a hoax or real? Somehow, every single shooting has always been a hoax. Guess, luckily, for those poor families that we see crying and really feeling for the fact that their families were are in this situation were falsely hurt. But again, none of you have had any actual education in how to figure that out. But I see here and there. So, like I said... I couldn't, and to round it all up, I, you guys can open your eyes if you still close them. It's kind of weird. But I, I couldn't imagine the globe. Matter of fact, let me show you guys real quick what I mean. And, and to all the uh, flat earthers, I know, I know it's not real. But it's a good example of what I'm trying to tell you. Hang on, let me find it. There you go. That didn't exist in my brain. I mean, I saw pictures, but again, those CGI space photos, those um, those doctored, quote unquote, touched up images that NASA gives us. Um, when you don't know, and you're just now figuring out what one size says for us versus the other, that is not what I saw. I, I didn't have that in my brain. I couldn't muster how that happened. How the sun, the night, the earth rotation, that tilt, gravity, none of those things made sense. None of those things were able to be answered in my head. Therefore, I couldn't call myself a Glover anymore, I guess. Oh shit. Maybe we do live on a flat earth. Why would they lie? Land? Well, you do know there's 26% of, the, on, of land on Earth that civilians, restricted people, can't go to. We're not allowed. I'm telling you that right now. That's not conspiracy bullshit. You can go online and find that fact out. 
when you find out and you know stuff like that and then you hear we can't go places guess what that's a problem but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll continue I got a few more rants in me and I still getting this thing the, my uh, hangout or the what do you what you may call it uh, meet group going um, so let me back up and see if you guys had anything uh, Fred said you don't learn a lot of proofs unless you take higher maths and science courses either mm. I would say more on the lines of you don't you don't learn how in depth you have to go to learn about something then you know to that, to that degree digital change your name I saw Hale's comment with my own eyes out of my own own bedroom window from that point I knew space was real okay well now here's the thing and a lot of you guys a lot of people that I know know this about me um i was what you would call very odd flat earther um like i've been i've said a few quite a few times i i got in a lot more debates with flat earthers during my time than i did with any glober why because i i people was the only flat earth evolutionist i believe in evolution never in my life have i ever thought there was a creator to be a god so therefore i i that's not my thinking i don't work that way so what ends up happening is people find out you're you're, you're what you're an atheist no 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 <laughs> okay check this out i'm not an atheist i know it sounds weird right um because i i i don't like being quote unquote labeled um i i don't consider myself an atheist because um, if you look around, every atheist wants to prove to somebody who's religious that God, oh, God's not real. And I'm going to prove it to you. That's not me. I mean, we can have a discussion about it because I do have my thoughts and that questions. But that's not my job to sway your beliefs. Not at all. Matter of fact, I have much, much respect for people who are religious and it does good for. Why? Because why not? I mean, who am I? So that's how I am on that, that aspect of it. I, I don't, don't consider myself an atheist yet. I don't believe. Um, so what ended up happening is I had a lot of debates about evolution with flat earthers because I'm a flat earther. You can't, be, you can't believe in evolution when you're flat earther. Hmm, that's odd. I, I didn't know the shape had anything to do with it. But, you know, hey, whatever. So as time goes on, um, I do... Oh, Get to this thank you for the super chat uh digital de demonic he says uh how do you falsify the flat earth okay here's what happens um i'm asking questions i don't i'm not i'm not pushing flat earth uh one of the things that i i, I made clear during my live streams made very clear especially when i started live streaming this is you know when i was on panels i was a flat earther and i'd argue with anyone but i i didn't realize i was doing something and I, this is, I, I think this is a case for a lot of people. I didn't know I was, I was, I was only giving my arguments through global, you know, uh, phenomena that you, that science explains. I mean, literally, I would go look up something about, like, uh, for instance, this is actually a perfect example. These are the things that kind of kept me in flat Earth. I never, I, I honestly did believe it was flat because, again, remember. I told you what you see on that screen. I that's not what I saw. I didn't see that. I, I couldn't put that. I couldn't imagine that in my head. It just didn't happen. I tried. That was one of the biggest things that made me a flat earther. Um, falsifying it? No, I, I didn't falsify it. I just took all the the global globe phenomena that that science couldn't explain, or situations that had happened in science that that had altered, you know, the 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 way science had described it or saw it and i would use that to to test your confidence remember when i was a, when i when i got into this what happened to me I, I i literally thought i knew it all i call it i called it this i said or i said this and, and I, I meant it i still mean it to this day and and i i i really hope that everyone who does believe it's a globe 
really takes this to heart and, and thinks about it. Don't be more confident in your don't be more confident in science than science is in itself. That is the reason science does not prove anything. It knows it can be wrong. It knows it can change. But when you first find out flat earth is flat, that the flat earthers are real, you know what you do? You jump at it, jump at them because you know it's a globe. But do you? Do you really know it's a globe? Because for me, standing here or sitting here right now to this day, I believe I understand the way science, geology, uh, any any ology to you know that I've been around in these past three years have come up with enough evidence for me to factor in in my brain model, as so to speak, and uh, I I can I can now put the puzzle pieces together. And understand in my head when I'm thinking about this, where what fits where and why things happen. When I started doing that for Flat Earth, and I started putting those puzzle pieces together, I noticed something right away. I'd say I was a Flat Earther for two and a half years. The first year, I would fucking smash anyone in a debate. Or better yet, a closed discussion based on things you thought you knew. I can give a perfect example, and a lot of you guys know me from this. Um, Red's Rhetoric and I had a debate. We debated, uh, is, it a, is it a globe or not? Again, when I, I, when I have a group of friends, I guess you would say, a group of people that I see on a regular basis. I'm not going to lie. Sean, uh, even Travis, Amy. Amy's one of the big people. You know, Hugh. I've known Hugh for a long time. Um, see, fucking you seek and find. Um, there's a lot of people. You guys are part of my life. So what ends up happening is if I see someone talking shit, I got your back. If someone has something to say, if you got an issue with someone and you need somewhere to say it, I got your back. So you can find, you, I mean, look at so you can find. As much as I hate him, as much as I've crushed him, as much as he annoys the shit out of me, I still have got respect for the guy. There's, he was there from the start. I've known him, I've known so you can find the longest out of anybody in this chat right now. So for me to say, fuck you, goodbye, just because I think it's a globe and you think it's a, it's a fucking flat earth, I think that's pretty bitch. I think anybody who has an issue because of the shape of the earth, you're a bitch. And I can give a shit less globe or flat earth you really despise somebody because of that you're a shitty person because i can give you a list of 50 things right now that matter way more than the shape of the fucking earth and hey flat earthers it's not a gateway into the government's a piece of shit because as a glober the government's still a piece of shit anything you got an issue with happens on a globe just as much as it happens on your flat earth but the reality of it is, is if you want to talk science, you want to talk the shape of the earth and how we know, then let's be adults about it. Because Columbine doesn't have anything to do with the shape of the earth. 9-11 has nothing to do with the shape of the earth. Now, if you want to really want to talk about we're fucked, let's talk about some ge geoengineering that's about to start happening. You want to talk about what's fucked, let's talk about the thousands of peer reviews and their shitty ass websites that aren't even real. Okay, yeah, because that shit's real. That shit does shape what our kids are taught and how we live our lives. But here's the good thing. 99% of those shitty ass fake peer reviews get caught thanks to institutes. People that give a fuck. You can thank them later if you've never read a peer review. Remember this. That science that you deny so adamantly, you're still using them as your source of information. So why is your information truthful, right? And again, I'm thinking this as a flat earther. Yeah, it's weird, right? A lot of you guys would know, I asked a lot of questions 
And this is my problem with seek and find because I didn't need to ask a question more than five or six times, you know, because you've got to understand it. it takes time, progression. So, but what ends up happening is it's this. Hey, what, what, what do I want to do? What, like, it doesn't make sense. Why, why is it that I ask these questions? These people tell me these, these, these answers. They don't make sense in my, AKA model in my head, but it does work. Now, here's the thing that I, I realized right away. Nothing works. Mm -mm. I can get one or two flat earth, quote unquote, proofs to work. I can do that today. Problem is, in the system, you know, like the one we live in now, doesn't work. Think about that. You, you, you argue, and this, again, I'm talking to myself. I'm not talking in general. I'm not talking to flat earthers at all. I'm talking to myself. I'm going, how do you argue a globe phenomenon that doesn't even make sense for a flat earth? That's just the way it is. And that's what got me back on that fence. Now, mind you, for a year, I was asking questions. I was learning what the hell I was asking. I cared. It mattered. It didn't have to be flat. I thought it was flat. Remember that. Interesting thing happened. I realized. Oh, damn. No one's p putting out flat earth proof. Now, there's a place I can go and I can go ask these Glovers questions. They're not going to ridicule me. They're not going to expect me to answer them. But they'll talk to me. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's about 10 people at Jim Panda's Debate Flat Earth and More who did nothing but give me respect and help me through shit I was going through when it came down to what is this and how does that work? Now, I told you a minute ago I was an odd flat earther, right? Now, here's one of the reasons you can't judge a flat earther. I knew space existed. I, I, I knew the moon was 239,000 miles away. I knew it. There was no question. It didn't need to be debated. I knew that. Damn. Now I got to make that shit fit. How do satellites work? Hmm. Well, it makes sense that they have to be orbiting above us, but we don't spin. Now, mind you, the stars, the sun and the moon, that, that, that wasn't my forte. I didn't go there. Uh, I had a bad problem. I went... Uh, I'm a, I'm a grade checker. I do sur I've done topo surveys. I what I call survey ho by hobby. Um, there are certain things that you look at and go, okay, I can see how that works. Well, when you start learning why I I was never taught anything about curvature or or why bridges, for instance, have nothing to do with curvature. I know. There's maybe a couple that have to, but guess what? Golden Gate Bridge people? No. It's not built with curvature in mind. Not even a little. Why? Because it's built in sections. Those towers that lean two inches to in different directions from 90 degrees, that's not for curvature. It's called tension. It's a tension bridge. Bridge, is bent, bridge has that nice curve to it for a reason. I knew that. Red's rhetoric, he didn't. I argued until I got triggered on his, uh, on his uh, stream. And that was when I realized that uh, there are just assholes out there who aren't willing to give a fuck. There are many arguments out there that I've had that people, you know, you lost that... Okay, think about it. I had a discussion with Red Rhetoric, a debate, and everyone laughed. Bridges 
are made for curvature. Ha ha, the flowers are stupid. Ask him now. Next time he streams, go ask Red Frederick if bridges are built. The Golden Gate Bridge is built with curvature in mind. Then go watch that stream and tell me who won that debate. Now, again, that's not a flat earth proof, but that's the kind of stuff I rolled around with. Things I knew had nothing to do with curvature, but everyone thought they knew. That's that confidence in science. Again, a year and a half, maybe a year and, let's say year two, I wasn't quite sure. Now, I'm starting to get an idea uh, that, hey, guess what? We, we actually do live on a... Uh, Hang on one second, I'm trying to, trying to do something. Okay, so I kind of thought, you know, uh, well, I, I see that it looks flat around us, but now I got a boatload of shit in my brain that I got to figure out why. Why it doesn't work on flat earth? Let get down this chat because I know I was going to answer questions and I kind of just went on couple rants off of only like two questions thank you trish i do appreciate that um it, it at first here's the crazy thing trish i thought i was i thought it was the natural progression of things when i became a glober again i thought okay well you think it's flat you learn you start to understand these things and you, then you leave because it's not flat it doesn't work and that's not the, so people understand, man, because of flat earth, and again, I say this, I don't regret flat earth at all. Why? I've packed, I can say right now, I've probably packed at least 12 years worth of, of knowledge about information I had no clue about in my brain in three years. Because luckily for me, and I, it's weird having to say this because I know I have to say it now, luckily for me, I was in it for truth. I was there to find out, to understand everything I could, I could find out. So what ended up happening is I basically uh, learned everything I do now, thanks to Flat Earth. Um, but all in all, I realized that things didn't work on Flat Earth. They couldn't be answered because I did ask a lot of Flat Earth content creators and they didn't really have the answers for me. They gave me gift scallop. Um, I had to realize it's not flat guys. And I've said this a thousand times and I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed this. When you question my character, I, I, I trigger, I trigger fast. And that's because I was raised. Um, you are what you perceive. You are who you want people to be to you. So what's ended up happening in my life is I become extremely loyal to my friends. You've been exposed dreads. That is my best friend on here. I would consider him family. I've talked to him. I confide in him. I've learned a lot from him. Um, I learned to be in it for truth, thanks to him. He, he sat me aside many times when I came around and said, don't just listen. Don't just take in what we're saying. Go look it up yourself. Go research it. Go, come to your own assumption of what is, what, where we live. And for that, I didn't get stuck in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a circle jerk. I didn't get stuck in a merry-go-round of bullshit. We built. We really talked about a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with the shape. And just, in, just jumped in and dived into how things worked. And, and I learned a lot from that. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I have his back through and through. Not only that, you know, with all the people that said he was doing this and that, he, he's what he calls show to his receipts so many damn times he doesn't need to for me anymore uh so with that said that is a truther who believes it's flat that i have nothing but respect for along with hundreds and hundreds of others flat earthers that's why i run a no disrespect type policy because what if one of my friends were here that's flat earth i'm not gonna let you talk to him that way so that, why talk to anyone that way as far as I'm concerned, the second I say hello, hello, how you doing, how you doing, glad to meet you, you too. You guys have already shown respect. The respect is there. As far as I'm concerned, respect is there. 
it can only be taken and that is up to you whether or not that happens so that's how i run it um and that is why i run no disrespect um i feel that there there are things that flat earth does still bring to the table that's why i still have these discussions more importantly it's how i learned it's how i came to an understanding of how where we live based on science i, I learned how science works I learned what science is, the scientific method. I learned what, what matters to figure these things out. Let me get down this list because, damn, I haven't moved my uh, cursor in 20 minutes. Let me get down here. Uh, let me see. Okay, no, really, no really other questions except for comments. Let me see if I can... Uh, Sean said, Sean, when, would, when we question our world... Uh, this is from Sean Smith. He said, when we question our world, our our world, we open up to the possibilities of ideas that had taken for granted. Exactly. I took my knowledge for the globe for granted. Hmm? Um, and, and that's the other thing. So, so I kind of see people talking to Travis. Travis's ether ban idea, I came up with a dozen of those. Right? But here's the thing. Before I talked about them, I, I, I made it very clear very clear i don't know i'm just trying to figure it out it's impossible impossible for any one of us on youtube to then prove anything to anyone here you guys realize that right i mean we're not sci we're not sci doing science this is called you know this is philosophy it's philosophy of the science of science we're just discussing it basically but you know there's two different ways of doing that um i think it was actually brenda um today on jose's that said this and she said it differently but this but this is why it runs the way it is debating you don't learn anything i've always agreed with that in a debate who wins win or lose one's gonna win one's gonna lose no one cares what the information is being put forth. They're seeing how the other reacts and waiting to see who rage quits, basically, in this community. So you don't get anywhere with debates. I like to discuss things. Why? Because discussing, it's, a, it's, it's, it's discussion between two people. There's no one should be trying to win. You should be trying to understand, learn, get somewhere with this, this, this discussion that we keep having every day. Now, a lot of people get up for that because th I, I, things are repeated. Uh, Seek and Find is a, is a convicted repeater. Um, I don't mind. Why? Because sometimes there's people that never heard these discussions that come here. And I get to refresh everything I learned and get it in my brain enough that I don't have to go in through my notes. Yes, I do have notes. Mind you, people. Um, I've been in this, what I call a community, which is both sides, um, for three years. I have three years worth of notes. I took notes from the start. I take notes today. Um, if you don't take notes, probably not very interested in it. Or, or I, mean, I mean, you may be educated enough that you know and you've gone through that research and that, that, that figure, figure it out situation for years. I don't mean you guys. I, I do apologize for that if, if you thought I did. Um, but for you, if you don't know, notes are a great way to remember what was said, how you interpreted it for that matter. Um, but I, I have my notes. I still look at them. I go through my notes from the day one. Um, I'm going to be doing this actually really soon. I'm going to be uh, kind of going through some of my arguments as a flat earther from my streams that I had prior. Again, I wasn't a flat earther. You came, and I said this. I was not someone you came to for flat earth proof. I wasn't. I, I had good questions. I used phenomena to the best of my ability to stump every glober. But the reality of it was, once I started understanding these things, I realized why my arguments were just globe arguments. I used to use dark, dark matter as, as my gravity. Gravity? How far was that? Was it tested if it works everywhere? Uh, 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 yeah, dark matter. Oh, gravity don't work no more. Guess scientist doesn't know. Well, yeah, guess what? Scientists tell you they don't know what dark matter is. God, it's just a name, stupid. Shut up. Anyway, I'm ranting my ass off. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm starting a count. Hang on. You guys, you guys give me half a second. 
I can get this going. Hang on. I've been ranting, so I forgot to do this. And I'm too lazy to want to use my Hangouts. It'll take me a half a second. Hang on. La, la, la. Don't blame me. Besides, I need to take a breath. Hang on. Drink some soda. Yes, that was soda. I don't drink. I can't see the chat at the moment, so give me one second. I'll be right back there. I get this. I'm getting a meetup started right now. So I can get you guys in here. Do apologize for the long wait for it. I do realize it was long. Uh, hang on, stop. stop. Hang on one second, guys. I gotta get something. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. Um, where I don't even remember where I was at. I was kind of oh yeah, I was taking a breath. Uh, so let me get into here. See if you guys have any questions, anything comments. So I'm kind of just going through them. What's up, Seek and Find? What's up, Aaron? What's up, Streaming? What's up, Negator? What's up, Travis? Let's do anyone else. I think that's about it for right now. Now, uh. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, I I I do I do uh, love my rants. I trust me. I got rants for days. I used to rant all the time. Uh, that's kind of why I started streaming. Um, oh yeah, that's what I was doing. I got sidetracked and I forgot what I was doing. Now I remember. Ha ha. Let me finish getting this hangout going. La -la -la -la. those of you who don't know what the hell's going on i'm redoing my uh my uh google hangout or whatever the hell you call it google meets there you go brain's working again my google meets i'm trying to do it at the same time so that's why i'm meandering in thought okay so basically what i'm trying to say is I was, i'm doing the a new Google Meet so I can get you guys on here and you guys can laugh at me and yell at me for being a flat earther at one point in time, which is another odd thing when someone goes, oh shit, you're a flat earther? Because, you know, they didn't know me prior. <laughs> okay, so... In the chat, <laughs> uh, I don't know what veggies are. I'm fully against them. Bacon only. Thank you. <laughs> Ancient, I mentioned survey, and that got Aaron all happy. What's up, Free Mind? How you doing, sir? Free Mind is another one. Shit, ne uh, negator. I know you remember when I was a flat earther. I was just talking about that a little while ago. The people that knew knew me as flat earthers, as a flat earther. Uh, 
Uh, Sean said, wait, I'm confused. Nigeru said, being a flat earther requires suspending the ability to question. Wait, Negator, did I? Did I suspend the ability to ask questions? Because I wasn't. And, I, and I've come across a lot of flat earthers that don't, don't as well. Oh my god, there's so many conversations going in here. Can't can't tell who's talking to who. Alright, so let me see. Here we go. Oh, that was much easier than I thought. Okay, so like I said, um my flat earth experience is not regretted. Um if you haven't, I mean I I don't know what uh rock you're living under. Uh if you haven't experienced my farewell to, fair, to uh, blah, blah 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 my experience to flat my farewell to flat earth uh live stream i did um it, it was uh i think it was about 10 months ago i don't remember hang on let me get the try to find it real quick so i can share the link with you guys because um again when people question i guess my integrity that's when i get triggered very easily um I do wear my heart on the sleeve. I, I do. I was here for for good reasons. So when it did happen, and I did realize uh, it was wasn't flat anymore. Um, one of the things that uh, I think Jose, our friend Jose, may have been uh, plagued with, was the uh, oh shit, what are my friends gonna think? You know, not the friends' friends on Earth, but like. My flat earth friends, what are they going to think? Um, I didn't care. By this time, I realized that it doesn't matter what you think the fucking shape is. Um, I, as a flat earther, if I remember correctly, in the Gator, we had many of conversations and never did it get disrespectful. Um, so as far as I was concerned, and also by this time, uh, I many flat earthers were, were the porn bombers. Many of the flat earthers we're, we're purposely having things happen for gain. Bro Sanchez. Um, but I didn't, by that time, I didn't want to be involved with those type of people. Those are the people I asked questions and couldn't answer. Um, but like I was saying, uh, when I realized that it, it was, wasn't flat, I had to come to the conclusion that uh, either my friends are in it for truth or they they're not what i realized is that when i said i was going to be a glober i figured well most of flat earth will despise me the others you know people that i talk to on a regular basis will understand will be cool well guess what um i'm going to give you a rough estimate i'd say about 40 percent to 60 percent of the people that i thought i was cool with um were fake not when I, I don't mean fake friend i mean they're fake flat earthers yeah i can tell you right now on a on a pretty confident level there are plenty of flat earthers who are very much so in the argument no it's not flat no it's not flat they understand it's a globe they're just there to fight the people that are have a conscience I think are and it's going to sound weird. Aaron, um, Gleam, these are these are these are the same people with a conscious. They can't. They don't want to tell you it's flat because they you know. But why not argue with about it? Why they know it's not flat, but the argument can be fun. And I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I'll go to, like if I'm in Discord, I I'll argue as a flat earther. Why? Because I, I know the arguments. And sometimes some Glovers need to understand, hey, your facts aren't your facts. Your facts need to be your understandings, people. If you're going to talk about something, try to convince someone of something, you better be very knowledgeable in that situation. Otherwise, we're just talking. Right? So, like I said, it's... Let me see. Let's see if this works. Nope, it won't work. 
I'm in the middle of having it start up. And I started ranting again, so it's your guys' fault. I'm locked out of my account. How do you start a new account? I not start a new account. How do you pay? I have a payment, but I don't know how to pay it. Uh, I found it. All right. Okay, so my Google Meets is back up and running. I'm sorry, guys. They tried to throw a, there it is, Billy. Tried to throw a wrench at me. Figured it out. And just so everyone remembers, I can't read everything. Aaron, what? Okay. You got to tag me, Aaron, because I can't, I'm not going to read every damn question. So make sure you tag me if you have something to say to me, because otherwise I have no idea. All right, and I just got to make a payment right now. Yes. Oh, yeah, because so everyone knows if you have Google admin and you can have a meet, make sure you stay on it because they'll just bill you and not charge a card yet. So when it builds up, then they can charge you. It's quite wonderful. Let me get this. Let me get my bills paid and I can get you guys in here. All right. All right. So we're good to go again. Let me go ahead and get a meet up going it only took what an hour and a half let me jump down to the chat all right what you talk so you can find i'm sure you know gravity is real now you couldn't possibly not understand it. You said it so many damn times to you. Okay, here we go. All right, so here is the link. Finally. Oh, and that'd be perfect time to express. Okay, so this link is the my original flat Earth farewell um, upload. Mind you, laugh now. I don't care. I did cry. Um, let me see. Join meeting. And here's the link to the meetup. All is welcome. All they welcome. Speak, speak, or let's speak. Damn, I didn't even sound like Jose. I was so sad. I feel bad. I shouldn't do that ever again. All right. Get the panel up here. And I mean, do you guys want me to have the the chat up? I don't, I don't understand why people like that in the first place. Hang on. What is up? Hang on. What's Alex? Ah, oh, hang on. Don't talk yet, cause you'll blow everyone's ears. Hang on, guys. Hang on. All right, hang on. I just got to get my speakers right. Good party, guys. This is my fault. There we go. Now I can hear you guys perfectly. I'm getting there. Right, gotcha. Hello, folks. How you guys doing? Everyone, thank you for joining. Damn. Damn. There we go. Get everyone in here. There it is. I, I'm not gonna lie, Travis. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem right without you doing that, man. It doesn't seem right. What's up, Aaron? Oh, I still got another hour in me. So uh, there he is. What's up, sir? So he's, uh, I wanted to. Me? 
by some what i was confused at first i was like huh now, um i was gonna say i think on this panel right now i think hugh i think you're the only person who knew me as a flat earther here i don't think we talked very much but you i know you've heard me around huh 10 months ago i left flat earth Say again? Mine? Um, a few people. Fight to Flat Earth. A lot of people found me through Fight to Flat Earth. Um, I did one. I did one with uh, Non Sequitur, which I regret. Oh man, I hated that. Um, I did one with Soundly. I think that was it. I did three. Aaron, 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 every time you talk, you don't have to say that. I actually know your, I know everyone on my panel right now by voice. I don't even have to look. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop talking. Are you okay, you right on. at the last Aaron, bit? And Aaron, then, uh... Aaron, no one could hear you. I'm trying to say I, I apologize because I didn't have the volume on. Well, I'm, I'm no, unmuted. I know, What's going I know, on? but I... Uh oh, he, just for the record, four beers. Go ahead. <laughs> it's four and a half. Damn it! I just spilled it. Um, I remember hearing you at the last bit of your of your flat Earth experience, and uh, and after that, I do recall your comeback, whatever you want to call it. My right? come? What do you mean my comeback? But that's how hey, I Hey Sean G, it. real quick, they can't hear you in YouTube. They can't hear me. They can or they can't they can't hear the panel on YouTube. Okay. They can hear wait, you but not wait the, a minute. the panel. I, I just fixed Somebody that. did what on your what? <laughs> they can, they can hear something it. I, I, I something did it. someone did something on his panel. Okay, is it, okay, is it so, all me? No, Dark Seed, he's not shit face yet. He's Four beers deep, which means he's just he's in a good buzz mode right now. So he'll About he'll he'll uh, Aaron. <laughs> and randomly have it's bad. Only two, I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, hey, yeah. Can you change your name in the in this app? No. It's when uh, you sign if you up. change. Yeah. Also, if you change your name in Google, it will change okay. for your okay. YouTube login as well. Yep. Okay. Oh. As your, that's where it gets it from. And I haven't figured out this one because, like, my avatar for this says I can't change it. I can't use a, a picture. My other one, my other account, the uh, secondary, I guess you call, that I can, I can use on here, that one I can have my icon, but the main account never lets you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So, like, if you. I changed my avatar in my main account. Do you, can you have a, can you start a meetup? I don't. I don't use the meets. Okay. I just get on the meets. Yeah. Then so I I paid for it, so I can yeah. start it. That account I don't believe you can because even Jose's says J. Oh, it does too. The one with his account with his avatar, that's the secondary. That's so. Um, you know how we don't hear the buzzer anymore. So yeah, you start with this one. I add my default. And then I air to to the stream that my with the other default one. one, yeah. And all I got to do yeah. is turn the speakers off of the other meetup. Yeah, because uh, you see, when Jose starts uh, presenting, you see Jay Gonzalez come in. Yes. Yeah. But that's the main account. And uh -huh. but luckily, that default free. You don't have to pay for that one. Um, it's not expensive. I think it's like twelve bucks a month or something like that. The only issue is, is that I've had is, honestly, I didn't think about it, and I hadn't seen any charges on my card, so I don't think about it at all. Well, just now it let me know that I had six months worth of freaking meetups <laughs> that I needed to pay for. So that was the oh. quandary I had to go through. Oh, damn. Make I money. I couldn't figure it out because it said I could, it wouldn't give me the option to start one, but I've always been able to. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I was trying to figure that out. And, came to that conclusion and checked it and I was right. But uh, yeah, let's talk about flat earth. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I actually I actually have a comment on your fireside chat you just had with us. Okay. Okay. Um, you brought it across in the same style, and, and I've listened to people like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lawrence Krauss talk about how they got into being astrophysicists and all that sort of stuff. And the way you described how you got into Flat Earth was due to observation, deduction, induction, and your own reasoning. Yep. And that's exactly how people get into science. Uh, and I, the things that I'm, I've learned have primarily been the things that I want to learn. Like, so I, I take interest in it, so I dive deeper into it. Um, thanks, <laughs> it's just going to sound odd. Thanks to Flat Earth, I'm teaching myself particle physics. Is it the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole entire life? Absolutely. How far am I into it? Not very far, but um, I'm enjoying trying to learn it. And uh, it, it, it's definitely giving me a better idea of how science works. The things that when they talk, when I hear talks about these about particles and, and uh, theoretical particles, what ends up happening is I have a better understanding of getting to that network of hows and whys and what ifs. <laughs> and it just, it, it makes me... It, it makes me want to research more. What happened when you heard that there was quarks? I, I so first of all, this is what happened. So I find out there are part, the, the fundamental particle physics or, or particles, blah, 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 particle physics. Um, and I realized, okay, I got it. I mean, this is easy. <laughs> it came and then someone goes that's dude that's just like <laughs> base. that's like that's like as like those right there are like the atom that's like what it's just those are the gimmies <laughs> like we don't even have to look in the microscope to know those exist and i went huh and then i saw the real list and i'm like oh shit 72 of the worst names to ever have to say in your life not to mention there are colors there's weak and strong and this and that and i'm going what color and how does you how do you know what color it is and they're like dude it's not a color i'm like oh shit um that was like the first four months <laughs> so not understanding it but what ended up happening is is um i had to figure out a, a way of figuring these things out so uh when it was like yeah a cork and i'm like what the fuck is a cork well i ended up having to do it like this a glue gun a glue, a hot the fuck mic there on un unpaid what the hell i thought i shut it off no no are you wiping your ass on a tree what the fuck <laughs> nope <laughs> I'm, eat, I'm eating crackers. I feel bad for those fucking crackers. Holy he al he always says that. He always says, "I thought I muted." That's his go-to. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I had to get like, glue on. Like I, I realized, you know, those are the those are the, the the glue, the building blocks of an atom. So just to understand, I'm, that's as far as I am. I, I understand how atoms are made what they do and I, I understand you know photons and when they're describing the different reactions that they're getting in CERN all these type of things make it clear not a lot very a little clear when I'm trying to understand it because I can tell you now there's a lot of people out there that we have these discussions about gravity and the uh, uh oh graviton and th sorry guys it's not a proof gravity isn't real and it's not a it's not a proof gravity is real guess what it's not, it's just something they think may be there. It would make sense. It doesn't make sense in a lot of ways, and I can argue that all day. But <laughs> you got to want to know just, it to know it. Yeah, uh, the, the fact that you, you understand that a gluon is glue. Hmm? It's what sticks all the particle together to make up the atom. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, it's a fundamental part, particle. Uh, also, the fact that you, you you understand that there's there's quarks, leptons, and bosons, mm. but they also have an opposite as well. And you've got the ups, the downs. Um, what is it? The strange, strange, strange. truth, yeah. beauty, and charm. That's there the ones. Go. See, I got to remember. Yeah, I gotta you, refresh you, now. You, and see, yeah, I muted you myself. <laughs> you, you think it comes from a fantasy book? No. But they they named them on what they actually do and how they came about finding them. It was like the first word they said when they saw it. Fuck it, that's what we'll name it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh, it's it, 
In, in, Sorry, you've also got muons. Hmm? Like a fucking cat meow. Wait, what? <laughs> Say it again? Yeah, yeah, it's another particle they've found called a muon. It's part of the lepton family. Uh, uh, the, the most famous lepton is the electron from which we yeah. get electricity. The other members are the muon, tau, electron, neutrino, muon, neutrino, and tau neutrinos. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Particles, <laughs> buddy, they get smaller. Why do you have to keep <laughs> adding more? God damn it. <laughs> was gonna be oh my God. Science finds new information and then adds it to what we know. Yep. And, and here's the thing. I, a lot of what I see now is a lot of flat earthers will grab on to, to science, you know, the one that they don't trust at all, and use it as if it's a flat earth pr evidence, I will say. Um, that was where I came up with that whole idea. And yes, everyone that says it or hears this, there are no flat earthers. There are only globe deniers. Fuckers, that was mine. You're welcome. <laughs> For just so everyone knows. But uh, more importantly, um, it, it's any, if you can't use, like, if someone's, a, if you peg someone a liar, you can't use their information to prove your point. See, it kind of is like an oxymoron. It doesn't work. Granted, Flyers would have nothing to say because then they wouldn't have information that they're getting from somewhere. Uh, I think the biggest issue with flat earth is perception and realizing that your senses on a worldly scale suck ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> bad. Like you have no idea how bad, like it's insanely horrible how bad our senses are when it comes down to it. Um, I wish, it would, I wish I didn't have to say it, but it, it's the way it is. It sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, uh, scale. That's something that I hear a lot of people talking about in uh, measurements and stuff. You can't, you can't scale something without knowing the numbers you are working with. Now, here's a scale that's going to make you think, oh, my God, that's a big number, but it's freaking tiny. Listen to this. <clears throat> there are one million neutrinos in a proton. Damn. It, it is a million. Hang on. Let me double check my source. One billion. So it's even bigger. And how many cross your hand at any given moment? Uh, the, that all depends on the, the rate of neutrino fall through the atmosphere, whether they're interact interacting or not interacting with any form of antimatter and don't don't even ask that question <laughs> this is exactly why i asked that question <laughs> that, and things well, like that is what made me realize what science is in it for they just but the chances of a the chances of a neutrino interacting with something is almost nil so that can just be ignored well that part mm. But it, 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 no, no matter how small the, the instance of something happening, there is always the uncertainty field that follows it. Are you sure? <laughs> That's why it's called uncertainty. Because <laughs> you don't know whether it did or whether it didn't. And you're not going to. <laughs> uh, talk to the cat. <laughs> did it die or... Did it scratch a hole in the bottom and through the floor that I didn't see it get out of? Wait, that's a new one. <laughs> I, th I didn't even know I heard that was a possibility. I guess anything's possible. Ah. See, see? That's, that's what a lot of people think flat earthers are stuck in, is that they're not open to other possibilities of questioning. No, well, that there's a finite solution. No, no. Well, they like to question, but remember, see, here's the thing. You start off at a point where you, you're not really realizing that you're you're not giving a flat earth. These aren't flat earth evidences, but they are to you when you first start. And then remember, if NASA lies, science lies, they then have to deter in their head, which is lying and which is truth. And as far as they're concerned, everyone is a puppet. 
It's because, I mean, realistically, the stuff I learned in school, yeah, that's, I mean, a lot of the stuff we learned in, in school up to, like, m maybe our second year of high school, we all just crammed in, remembered, and when we, and when we needed to repeat it, and that was it. Nothing else, nothing more. And most of most people are like that. Most people don't think about space and haven't since eighth grade. And then they find this. And then there's people <laughs> that are confidently talking to you like they know what they're talking about. Like Riley. It I mean oh, I, I as much as I like to say no, I didn't get fooled. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand and I got fooled. It's just the reality of it. And I guess you got to be humble enough to fucking realize it, admit it, and get through it, and continue on. <laughs> yeah, the the comment you made there about how how science is lying. Uh, if if that's what a lot of flat earthers believe, not every one of them does, because because some of them still believe in their scientific method. But if they think science is a lie, why the hell do they hold on to thermodynamics? They don't understand thermodynamics. Most Glovers don't understand thermodynamics. Yeah, uh, that, that, that was a fundamental thing I found with the second law because it talks about uh, entropy in a container, okay? does It doesn't say anything about an atmosphere. It's just pressure, gas pressure, in a container will fill that volume until it equalizes. And that's it. That's thermodynamics in action. It's just, just it's literally not understanding it. And, cause, well, see, it's kind of hard because I, I can only tell you why I, I did. And um, realization is, is that it's not going to be the same for everyone. But how do you say it? Um, With you, words. You're, you're constantly trying, <laughs> Dick. You're constantly trying to figure things out, and when you're on, and you're constantly trying to figure things out, what ends up happening is, is the idea of how something could be different fuels it. For instance, we are carbon based. If you read it deep enough into science, science will let you know that at some point. This world, Earth, terraformed itself. It was not a, uh, it wasn't a, it hasn't always been a carbon based life form system. Believe it or not, science says they, this is what science says. Then we find out that if there was another way, it would probably be silica. Problem is, it doesn't, doesn't bind like, like carbon does, like the, the, the stuff that we're made of. It's a structure. It, somehow these, these particles, these molecules, they all just mesh, and this is what happens when those ones do it together. Well, silica, if you had an apple tree, and it's silica-based, what ends up happening is, is the second generation of apple trees may be purple. Maybe only have one limb or, or a bush. Or don't one. produce apples. Oh, yeah. Or you get a banana, <laughs> for all that matter. Yeah. The idea is, is that things when there's no structure to it. You would not have humans. <laughs> You'd have things that just happened. And we it would, trust me, I don't even think our brains would develop ever enough to even realize it. That's how bad it is. Um, but again, the. The thing that you then learn from finding out that it wasn't carbon based, but in silica, I mean, let me, don't get me wrong. That's just an idea of how it works. I, I mean, I can't tell you that for sure because, again, I've never broke it down in the lab. But what facilitates things like giants is a silica based land. If it was silica based, you would most likely have giants. Why? Because it, it is a stronger, it, it's a, the structure is, is stronger. The way it, I guess you would say grows. I don't even know how you would phrase this. Um, the reason elephants are large and humans aren't that big. <laughs> Something tells it to do that versus not do that. The silica tells everything, get big. <laughs> so, we, the, But there is a limit. But mm -hmm. there's a limit that can be reached by life forms 
you know, we're dealing with volume versus surface area, um, you know, supporting limbs. Oh, There's a reason the largest, the largest of the animals live in the ocean. Oh, but remember, back in, way back, way within, way back, millions of years, Earth's atmosphere was far more denser than it was today. Denser in what what uh, uh, chemical? In its, uh, in its, uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I can't say for sure, and I don't know enough to. There were the exact word. That's there were times when it had more carbon dioxide. There were times when it had more hydrogen sulfide. There were times when it had more oxygen. I'd say you know it's. I say oxygen, oxygen, or if we're talking dinosaurs, yeah, that'd be that situation where the atmosphere itself. Yeah, they they were in a highly oxygenated atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's how they were able to grow so big. So what what happened was, uh, this is this is a little story I heard. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. just before, yeah. Just if so you don't want a flat earther to get to get triggered and snap at you for saying dinosaurs, what you say? You ready? Ancient yeah. animals. Yeah. Um. They okay. Yeah. Okay, Davros. Tell it. Okay, Davros. <laughs> tell us about the dinosaurs. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. During, during the development from the pre-ancient animals into the ancient animals, we know, we know, no, 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 the, the animals before the dinosaurs were not dinosaurs. Remember that, okay? That's a fundamental flaw creationists make. They, they think, uh, is it dinonopsid? Uh, they thought that was a dinosaur when in actual fact it was a lizard. So, yeah. Um, but what happened was during the time uh, around 225 million years ago, uh, the amount of oxygen atoms that combined with the carbon atoms of the animal were able to make bigger chains. Therefore, they were able to grow larger and larger as they got into the middle of um, the Cretaceous period. Uh, around 150 million years ago, they actually started to get a little bit smaller, such as Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus, whereas the sauropods were around around that 200 to, uh, I, I think it was 120 million years ago. Uh, and they actually found through ice cores that there was a drop in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. And that was going to be towards the, the, the small little chicken dinosaurs, ancient animals. <laughs> yeah that's uh that's that's when um you saw the um uh, that's actually when bird species started to come about see so was it in, in that time yeah, here's okay so we'll dive into the, the fun parts of this um i'll double check that dinosaurs for the most part i believe are falsified t-rex I don't think T. Rex was a was an ancient animal that existed as it depicted by any means, size, survival, you name it. I don't believe it. Um, sorry, I've got I've got like six questions in my head. I'm just thinking of the best one to ask you. Uh. If Tyrannosaurus did exist, would you think he was a hunter or a scavenger? Have to be a scavenger. Good man. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. Why would an animal like that have had such small arms yet such a big head? No clue. <laughs> but I know it was Because the arms, the arms weren't needed for him to be able to capture food that was already on the floor. But then, what would he have? What would have been before him? Before him. Before him. Uh, what would have? See, okay. So, what would have? See, so seems odd. I don't think I've ever said this. What would it evolved from? <laughs> I never. Allosaurus. Would I? Is that an Allosaurus? Okay. okay, I think I know what that is. I think I have an idea. Yeah. But. Yeah. Okay. Now. Scavengers don't last very long. That's my issue. Because I, I, 
I've come to the conclusion it had to have been a scavenger. Scavengers don't have a very good survival rate. Now, they may have lived for a long time, but I don't see how. I don't see how uh, 100,000 years, possibly, at most. But they, they do depict them to be in a long period of, of that time. Um, their mm. size, I, I, I don't believe they're the size. We know for sure quite a few of those dinosaurs are chicken size almost <laughs> depicted larger. Mm. I mean, the, the, she, everyone knows what a velociraptor is on, from the movie Jurassic Park. They had those things in. And that's museum. strong. But no, see, they had those in museums as velociraptors for a while. Not as big, granted, but to find out they were actually a very tiny ancient animal kind of gives you a realization of what happened. Now, the reason behind where I come from on this is uh, I read about, you know, basically what started this whole dinosaur fiasco. And something that was asked, and I didn't know if it was the, what the answer was. And this is kind of what made me realize it. Um, there were two guys that basically found some bones, so to speak. And for the next 20 years, it was like like a circus of scam artists selling bones of whatever the hell they found as dinosaur bones it became a big, big industry. Well, when you find that out, and then you find out, you know, oh yeah, by the way, of all the dinosaurs we've ever found, there's only a handful that have ever been completely found. Now, I get why. God, I get why. <laughs> Don't get mad because I do understand why that is the case. But you guys have a very large collection of full looking dinosaurs in those museums off of one bone. And that I don't like. Uh, I, 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 I completely understand where you're coming from. Now, what, what, okay, uh, there's, there's a perfect story about the iguanodon thumbnail. Mm -hmm. They used to think it was the horn of another animal. Yeah, I remember this. They then, they then called it the Iguanodon with its thumbnail on the end of its nose. And, 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 and that still happens today because they find fragments of bones, a couple of bones here, maybe half a hip bone. Uh, what, what they do is they use that fossil record to see you know, does it match this one? Does it match that one? And they make their best, po that best possible guess. But, okay, so here would be the problem. If you're on the coast, if I live, so I live on, in San Diego, if I go 25 miles in and I happen to find a mammal's hip bone, I'm going to have a problem. Because I'm going to assume it's a land animal. Could be a whale, though. Mm -hmm. But if I also know that the ocean was there, I could assume it's a whale. Now, where do I put that in the fossil record? Because now anything with a hip of that size and that structure, it's, I'm going to assume is either land or, or, or ocean. And I'm going to be going off, off the right path based on that. Things like that. And, and that's not exactly an exact case. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, it's just, it's very much so wrapped in money. Uh, paleontologist field. I don't, I don't even know if it would be them. I think they're probably in it for more of the find, whereas in these museums, investors have made it a shit show. They've, yeah, it's, they've pushed the It's perception. the museums and the investors. Yep. The museums and the investors are the ones that make all the money. Paleontology isn't a multi-million dollar occupation. But yeah. when you when you get a piece of research that you've done and it's corroborated in a peer-reviewed system, you get more money in your grant to continue your work. Uh, the amount of money they get paid is, is probably in a pittance compared to the grants that they get to do the work. Mm -hmm. And right there, that's actually a perfect segue. The, the grants. Now, Science and it's bias. Science is not bias, but guess who is? 
the scientists that do the work. Now, they can be as biased as they want. They can even falsify whatever they want. But luckily, there are tools to verify whether or not they're being truthful or not. Again, you can't deny science. You have to deny the scientists who are human. So luckily, we've devised a way to also, you know, to fact check humans. Another tool, because our brains are too too dumb <laughs> to just know when we're being lied to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our brains are stubborn, fickle things, aren't they? Uh, Mr. Shills, have you done any research? You. On. On my numbers. I'm still digging. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the problem with doing something that was from so far back in history, whether it was 100,000 years ago or 65 million years ago, is that without any written evidence, it's hard to fact check anything. No, what I'm finding is that there was a spike in oxygen production, but I can't correlate it between any particular era. I think it's in, because it's pretty much from what he's talking about. So I, I realized this, this was something I had looked into because I, because I do a lot of like dirt work. Um, I, and I've done a lot of blasting and, I've done a lot of fucking digs. Um, I, I have the opportunity to talk to and learn a lot about the sediment layers. And I've been deep, 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 deep. I've, I've seen all, every, almost every single one in California up until you get to a, the granite layer. Um, to, so once I started learning about that and it became part of my life, you know, and blasting and everything, because you, you have to know what you're, where you're blasting at, um, what ends up happening is... is there are certain things that are told that you then know and understand are, okay, I get it. For instance, we know a certain ancient animal was around based on where it's found. Think of it this way. Um, someone gave this analogy the other day and, or gave an analogy like this the other day and I told them to use the rainforest and they didn't, so I was upset. But the rainforest is the best example of this. When and I just found it. Yeah, I just found something very interesting myself. But let me get this. So, I mean, you guys do. So, a rainforest, what it does is it, it rejuvenates in layers. 100 feet down is the same topsoil of leaves that was there the day it fell down and then, reju you know, cycled itself. So, we know how long ago a certain level of sediment was around or at the top, so to speak. Go so nothing has been found in different layers than we found others, and with that being said, we have a a, a gray area in which we say time. So when they're like Earth is four billion years old, okay, that's its birthday isn't July eighth, nineteen, you know, negative seven billions, blah blah blah. It, it's just, it's a, a window. It could have been. It could be nine billion. It could be three. Two billion, but at least we know a ballpark, and that's kind of how a lot of these the dating goes. Okay. You guys want to? So can I go ahead and uh, absolutely let you guys know what I found? Yep. Uh, the great ox the great oxygenation event occurred just after the beginning of the Proterozoic Eon which was just after the Archaean Eon, and during the Precambrian -Pre era, approximately 2.4 billion years ago. That would have been far earlier than any dinosaurs, lizards, or pretty much anything that we understand or know today. Yeah, I just found something from 2013 that goes against everything they knew. They reckon it was only 10 to 15% instead of 21 to 30% oxygen during the dinosaurs uh, from 65, uh, from 145 million to 65 million years ago. Which would make but, it a lot smaller, wouldn't it? Or have to be a lot Well, um, that's the thing. Um, they, uh, he, here's a quote from... 
sciencedaily.com. Uh, we don't want to negate the influence of oxygen for the evolution of life in general with our study, but the gigantism of dinosaurs cannot be explained by those theories. So, eh, uh, do you or don't you believe that these people who studied amber fossils they found that studied that the oxygen levels were this low or is it that amber is not capable of showing the correct amount of oxygen that was around at that time i would believe that more yeah because why would a tree that takes in carbon dioxide have more oxygen in it that's that's my rule of thumb okay we're the opposite. We take in oxygen, get rid of carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide, I can get rid of oxygen. So it, um, I, I'm not seeing much else apart from the one <coughs> study. So it's a bit iffy. Well, we're also, uh, I also just found some more information on a neoprotozoic oxygenation event that occurred approximately 750 million years ago. That would have happened neoprotozoic. Wow. That would, have, that would have happened approximately uh, 750 million years ago. That would have been just prior to, um, you know, things coming up on land and all that good stuff as, as we was understand it today. So when we started, it was pre-Cambrian, wasn't it? Right, about 2.4 to 2.3 billion years ago. Yeah. And then another approximately 750 million years ago. So there were actually two bumps to, to bring it up to the approximately 21% that we've got today. And if, uh, let's see... Tab. Okay, let me. See. Oh, I know what I need to do. All right, I'm going to post in side chat. So if uh, Sean could share, at least get up on the screen what we're looking at here. Yeah. This is the, the clearest bit of information I've been able to find so far. And mind you, this has just been a few minutes of searching. So All take right. that into account. I'm about to share it right now. Okay. I have just found a more recent study that says that the oxygen during the Cretaceous period actually fluctuated between... The, Five percent and thirty-five percent. So there's conflicting ideas on what can and can't have happened. God damn you, scientists! Make your mind up. <laughs> you can only go with the information you've got. Give me some proofs. <laughs> Never. So anyway, we're dealing with the Great Oxygenation Oxidation Event and the Neoproterozoic Oxygenation Event. And those are the two bumps that uh, got us up into that zone. You're a bump. Yeah, like, like it or not. Okay. See how it gets a bit wibbly-wobbly at the end there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, and and that's, timey wimey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, come on, show me the picture. Are you trying to present? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I, I, I just couldn't read it because I'm on my phone. So, um, and the picture's no better when I actually open the document. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, I'm cracking open my bottle of brandy. What happened to Aaron? I'm worried. Maybe he passed out. Aaron ain't no bitch there unpaid. He can hang. Oh, he left. Oh, well. I was wondering, like, it just dawned on me. Why isn't Aaron interrupted at all? <laughs> okay. Well, the, as it sits now, we can see that there were two major oxygenation events, according to this this uh, yeah. graph here. Both of them occurring pri uh, uh, prior to large-scale um, colonization of the land by either plant or animal. If only there was a breakdown between that NOE and the middle of the FANA, because I, I can't work out the time scale properly. Yeah, I was looking for that too, couldn't find it. Um, so I wanted to at least present something. Because mm. it, it shows snowball earth event around that 700 million years ago. But without incrementation, I can't, I can't make out the rest of it. Well, if you'll notice, it also shows a snowball earth event around GOE as well. Yeah. Which I, I find kind of telling. They they seem to be uh, seem to be correlating, at least as far as the information we've got here. Well, if if that point five is five hundred million years ago. according to the numbers you gave me before. According to the scale, it would be. Yep. Okay, so that big lump in the middle is about halfway between 0.5 and 0. Right, about 250. Yeah, which is, is, is almost the start of the dinosaur period. And most of the um, sauropods were around 225 million years ago. And they were big. And it looks like there's a lot of oxygen there. Whales were still bigger. But whales are mammals, man. Come on. They're dinosaurs. They're birds. But you know what? They still got to oxygenate volume versus surface area. Hmm. So you would require. I'm not seeing any evidence that dinosaurs were big. I'm not seeing it at all. When uh, when you when you can swim in their footprints like a like a swimming pool, you know they're big. Yeah, but I've spent many <clears throat> I've spent many years uh, over the summers. We would take uh, several. Well, I won't say several. We'd take about two or three trips per year down to Glen Rose, Texas, and do picnics or whatnot. And us kids would swim in dinosaur footprints. What you think are dinosaur footprints? If you see them, you wouldn't question it. Well, people see things all the time, and they and we, we have to question it. I mean, so yeah. And then, what's your answer for a big footprint that people can swim in? It, you think it's a footprint because it looks like one, the same way people think <laughs> think, think trees used to be mountains because it looks like one. <laughs> oh, what one mountain that looks like a tree stump? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, basically. And it was in a movie. I don't know. Uh, what's it called? Um, Devil's Tower. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. But Devil's Tower is the, the idea. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sean, have you heard of Mount Maru? Isn't that the fucking tree of life or bullshit? That apparently is the stump at the North Pole. And Show then the four the rivers were the uh, Oh, roots. fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's Pete's, like, go-to. So people heard it, and then they started singing it, not knowing what it was. <laughs> and they'll continue singing it forever, just because. 
It's the bullshit that never ends. <laughs> it just goes on and on, my friends. Pete Chase started spouting it, not knowing what it was. Pretty much. Pete Chase a doofus on drugs. We won't go that far. Come on. Let's be nice. He's what? crazy, but we don't have to tell everyone. They all know. No. <laughs> the the, the so thing is, Sean. Doing, so what I'm doing is I'm, <coughs> I'm looking on Google for dinosaur footprints. Just I, look Glen Rose. Look for Glen Rose, Texas. That's all you got to look for. And Glen Rose is two words. I I, I know. Oh, hi Terry. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Okay, so let's go through these. I'm good. Yeah, I'm always blending into the background, aren't I? <laughs> What's up, old man? But. But I have been there. I have waded and and swam in those those footprints. I will tell you, they are there, and that is what they look like. Okay. And remember, Sorry. I said you can see left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. But okay, but that to me, so this would be an instance of what you're talking about, right? So this is correct. It says it's part of the again. That's that's just right? one of them. Okay. That's just one of them. Now, I could say I, personally, I could say. Yeah, those look like like duck feet, but they just look like duck feet. We don't know that that's real. That those are actual dinosaurs, right? I mean, there's no footprint, like a actual print. It's just a hole that shaped this way. What could have done that? I have no clue. I'm not gonna try to say I know, but there's a lot of things that could have done that that are explainable. Trying to find. Tell you what, how about this? When you get yourself a chance, you go there, and when you see them, that'll that'll remove, if not all doubt, then at least most of it. But that's what Bigfoot people that find Bigfoot stuff say. No, unlike Bigfoot people, these are real. But, but they are real because I swam in them. Is not a good. Isn't a good evidence for convincing me that they are real. Look, I've got pictures. I've got thousands of people that will okay. say, "Yeah, they're there." I, you, you've not? got videos showing them. You've got measurements. You have verified information on the stride of these dinosaurs. So you've got kind of, no, no, also no, the, the, so the, the these quote unquote footprints tell the stride of a dinosaur. Like we don't know if these are the dinosaur. Like they're just prints from something. For all we know, I. Like, I don't see there could be a thousand things. Okay, see. then then how about you put forward a hypothesis of what a conjecture of some kind? Yeah, something reasonable. A flood. Those are by. I know there are plenty of monsoons there. Trees get overturned and woke up over and in, in in the riverbeds. That happens all the time. But that wouldn't prove that dinosaur there was, weren't dinosaur footprints. No, I don't have because to. Because the don't I don't have to prove that they're not dinosaur footprints. I only have to prove that it could have been something else. Well, here's the thing: is um, you know the megalodon, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So that that was a that was a dinosaur as well. Down here in Florida, they do uh, uh, hunts for megalodon fossils all the time. Yeah, oh, I've, 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 um, was it, uh, damn, what the, uh, the woolly mammoth. I've, I've seen woolly mammoths. I'm not denying, you know, ancient animals. I just have a very hard time believing that the million year old ones did what the million, or were the sizes that they were. For instance, I, I live in Southern California. If you don't know, if you live in California, you don't know what the La Brea tar pits are, you're a fool. That, that is different because we were able to recover animals like they were full like full animals where dinosaurs are there, i guarantee you the picture we're looking at now that dinosaur there's probably not three bones of that dinosaur in in all of fucking any museum or storage lab but they know everything about that dinosaur that's the issue well, here's one thing you could do sean talk to the paleontologists to see what they think they're the experts right yeah, but they're the ones that are giving us enough information to know where they found it from. But 
they're not explaining it. Like I've looked into it, and I've and I understand that to find a dinosaur after that amount of time is damn near impossible. Not impossible. <laughs> damn near. Huh? It's not impossible. It's, well, they're, it's only, not, they're only finding fossils. They're not finding any bone. They're not finding any teeth. They're not finding course, any... Well, the, 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 the bones are fossilized at this point. If they're if they're stuck in the in the the uh, compressed earth for long enough, they become fossilized. Well, that's but usually that they're not getting so they're not. If we're just saying like a, a bone, a, an arm, femur, I don't even know the name of the damn bones, Fucking bone, whatever. <laughs> the leg bone. <laughs> yeah, they're not finding a bone. It's it, it will literally look like an outline of it of it. Okay, then how do you how do you Deal with uh, Sue, the T Rex that was found that had over ninety percent of the skeleton recovered. I would uh, quite question if it actually had that much. Well, it was found in situ. Or is there a way I, I want to give, I wanna give an idea. I, I want to give an idea of how old these footprints are in comparison to Earth's history of tectonic plate shift and stratification. I've got. A couple of pictures here. Okay, let me stop presenting so you can show yours. Those Again, ones are I'm on. Not, I'm not denying um, dinosaurs. No. I'm just saying that it's very easy to say this is what it is, even though it may not be. Okay. Uh, Dreadnoughtus discovered. Where was he? Uh, between 2005 and 2009. 70% of its bones were found. It weighed 65 tons. It was about 85 feet in length. you have a link? I, I will share, I'll share it in your Discord. Okay. These footprints are actually on a nearly a near vertical wall, which is actually the, um, the Earth's tectonic plates have shifted. In light from the layering of when they were, the footprints were actually walked on it. I haven't got a side. There should be a side view of the stratification section, but I can't find that one. That's okay. So let me layering. answer to this in the chat. Um, I I actually have looked into this. This I'm not arguing from ignorance, Charlie. I I, I may not be giving all I got. And an acknowledgement of where I stand, uh, I am playing a very much so devil's advocate role right now. But at the same time, it's it the 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 dinosaur quotes uh, industry is an issue. The, the the facts given by any museums should be questioned. I'm sorry, and that's just the reality of it. But I have looked into it. Um, I'm not. This is an argument of ignorance at all. Well, you get my point. The paleontologists spend their lives studying this shit. They would know, right? They know more than you would. Uh, oh, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah. The issue is, is that what's not also not depicted, and I think an issue, is that very few paleontologists actually ever find anything. Hmm? Very few are found. You got to... Not very many bones, fossils are ever found. Like, it's not an ev like every day they're not calling in and like, no, hey, I found this. Problem. Even what you're saying in, in, in the career of one paleontologist, you may not find very much. But then when you, when you combine all of them, you can find there's tons of shit out there. Museums all over the world have them. Okay, well, that's the problem because I can, I guarantee you, I don't think any paleontologist would disagree. I'd say 90% of the dinosaurs you see in a museum have nothing to do with anything real that was found it's a plaster cast and upon what do you do you uh build that argument you know why they did the, plaster the, cast. for the most part that they, they they'll tell oh. you if you really ask or if you, you know why the, how the museum oh yeah damage control fuck yeah those things would fucking shatter i get it problem is is don't say it's real don't Heavy. teach them as real but they still have the originals locked away safe somewhere okay that's fine but when you have a, a and this is, is an issue, when you have a class at a museum learning about dinosaurs and a student asks, is that the real bones? And they say, yes, 
that's an issue, and they do say yes. No, I, I, no, I don't think anyone would say that. Who said that? Oh, the, they'll do it at, at tours all the time. There's just, there's uh, stories about it all the time. Um, uh, uh, to find uh, sh- Sean, hmm? um, the, the, the way you're saying it is that the tour guide is saying that the actual fossil that they're showing you is real. No, what they what what they would be stating is that the animal was real. You know that sort of semantics. Okay, so, so like the picture we're looking at now that Terry's showing, I'm willing to bet that is not what they found in the ground. That is a cast. That is not what they found. Is, is, the reason why there's a reason why they only put casts on display. Okay, well, if that's a cast, and all of them are cast, you're telling me that that can't be made? Hmm? That can't be made? Like, for instance, this is a good example. Uh, For for instance, that right there, of that cast, they may have only found one of those scales. So what we're looking at, Um, one of those scales were found. I'm not saying that's Uh, going to happen. I'm just saying that's the type of case that happens. Sean, honestly, I, I really don't understand what your point is. Okay, so, so if that picture we're looking at, if yeah. one of those scales are found, how do you then have an entire dinosaur to show? Generally, they don't. Well, generally, they do. Because for how long was it that they only had, what, three bones from a, a T Rex? And we all knew what a T Rex looked like fought long before they found, what did you say, 70% of one? 90%. All right. <laughs> but we had T Rexes around long before that ninety percent was, was discovered, right? Or found. And I hate to drop this bomb in your lap, but there may have been three bones found here, a few bones found there, yeah. but yeah. they pieced together. Wow. So you, you happened to find a bunch of dinosaurs that were in the teenage years? Uh, <laughs> well the leg bone was connected to the hip bone. Yeah, well, how do you find a hip bone that's enlarged, not large enough? It's not the damn hip bone, or not structured the way our hip bones are, or any other hip bone we found. Portions are and, and, and put the thing together. That's what they do, I think. Yeah, Sean, have you ever done a jigsaw puzzle? Absolutely. Exact same way they learn how to put a dinosaur together. How does it fit? Well, does it fit? No. <laughs> Try this piece. No. If I try this piece, yes. Right now, completion like or of of fossil evidence, complete di- uh, fossil evidence. How much of it is complete? There are far more, and especially in the earlier times, where they were really finding a toe, a hip, a, a, a freaking a shoulder. I don't know, but they were finding these very random pieces. In putting a dinosaur to it. And that's just, I mean, I don't know how you guys are arguing against that. That's exactly what museums were, were pinned for doing for so long. Are you yeah, talking I, about I, the 1800s? No, I'm talking about to, up until 2000s. No, are you talking about people, uh, you know, oh. Oh, uh, back from, in 1800s finding a, a, a toe bone and saying, oh, I found a new dinosaur? From the then, yes. Is that what you're getting at? Then and okay, on, that and on, that through, did happen through the nineties. No, no, through the, no. Are you serious? I, okay, watch. I'll show you. Like you're acting like as if they find dinosaurs on a regular basis. No, they don't do that. Yeah. Well, okay, watch. Well, they sort of get paid to do that. It's their job. Okay, so you're telling. <laughs> and and now there were two dinosaur hunters in the eighteen hundreds that were well, in a they... race. Owen was one of them. I can't remember the name of the other. But yeah. they were real dicks to each other. They hated each other. And they were trying to outdo each other all the time. Those two were were a couple of assholes. They fucked up archaeology and paleontology a lot. Because they were in a race to see who could name the most dinosaurs the fastest. And they were both and they were both bullshit in the world so that they could get their names in the books. Yeah, and then you got things since like then, out. and since then, um, things have gotten a lot less competitive in that regard. Then you got things like the Piltdown Man. You heard of that, Sean? Oh God! 
Piltdown Man. No. It was bogus. Some somebody made that thing. It was, it was, guess who? Guess who found out it was bogus? Paleontologists, the real paleontologists. Once it was they like the, realized, no, this is fake. Yeah, yeah, it was like the the giants that they found, and then they found out that they were uh, they were uh, uh, bovine bovine uh, bones that they were putting together and in, in stating them as human. So, Sean, what you're getting at is. Are there people that are unscrupulous? Yeah, there are. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. know what? And the scientific method. This no, I, I beg to differ. Not in mm -hmm. modern times. Uh, uh, Gideon Mantle is the person you are looking for. Was the person Owen was toe to toe with? So you got one example of where somebody was dishonest and, and they they constructed a, a, a fraudulent fossil. That doesn't mean they're all fraudulent just because one person did it. I didn't say just one person. It, it's a lot more than one person. It's but the way you're talking, you're making it sound like this is an embedded way for all museums to act. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. That's what you're making it sound like. Well, you yeah, didn't well, say but, that. Well, I can you didn't say, say that, but I can say that if three bones from a dinosaur are found and put in a museum, other museums will then put the same damn complete dinosaur in their museums as well, yes. Oh, no, but no, is no, that no. dishonesty or is that or is that a lack of knowledge? Because they it's, weren't it's, sure. It's, it's dishonest. You can't how do you make a default uh, what a dinosaur looks like with with little or no evidence of it? For instance, well, it, for instance if they were given the wrong how you, information. How are you having this conversation with me? You guys know that for how long was T Rex the biggest, baddest motherfucker on earth? And we now find out that T Rex is was nowhere near a large fucking creature. What are you talking about? Why are you talking to me like this is only in the eighteen hundreds? Oh that's no, no, the, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. The, the, is if they were given the wrong information back in that time, and they were putting this on display, and, and they had no knowledge of it. That actually, this is a conversation I just had. If they had no knowledge of it then how is it dishonest? Because you're saying this is what it is. Therefore, it's dishonest. But that's what you were told by, by somebody, by the paleontologist. And the paleontologist is a chain of... of, of mm -hmm. is a chain exactly. Of, of uh, unknown. But so, Sean G, this is this is actually so, this actually goes yeah. into flat Earth because this is, you are to, you are told from by pe other people that flat Earth is it, you know that the Earth is flat, and you take you take the knowledge that they give to you and run with it, and it's the same exact the same exact um, uh, thing. If if the uh, if the um, oh shoot, it's getting late, so I'm losing my mind um if if the if the places where it, where it were told that this is the dinosaur then of course they're going to put it on display because it's going to draw more people in but if they had no knowledge of it and they were told by the paleontologist then you know it's not really dishonest at that point Are making it seem this isn't an everyday or this isn't what I'm saying is just hearsay. The problem is, is that this whole T Rex thing didn't happen in the 1800s. Recently, that we found out that that wasn't true, and I'm happy that paleontologists fat figured that out. But to think that that was the only case, to think that all, every dinosaur we know that is known in every museum has a, bone, a fossil record large enough to build itself. Doesn't like I. I'm not saying dinosaurs weren't fucking real, but come on, give me a freaking break if you're telling me that there's not an issue with what's being taught about dinosaurs. They would you see them all of a sudden tearing every fucking museum down and putting feathers on dinosaurs because they found one fossil evidence of a feather? How do you understand that it took two or three years? Before they were willing to accept the fact that they found a dinosaur with fo with feather fo fossils, that it wasn't like they found it and then everyone knew about it. 
We don't even find out what dinosaurs are found unless fucking museums buy them and present them. So is that is that a, is that information on our part? I mean, could we be more involved, or is that the you know? I mean, no. I, is I it a breakdown of information? I think based on the fact that ninety percent of paleontologists in their in their um, findings are backed by investors, and guess what? When those investors are the ones investing, they get to say. So if something isn't to be said to the public for a certain amount of time for whatever reason, that's how it works. If, if it's investors true. such as whom? Come on, unpaid. Like I know exactly who the f investors are, but investors. Well, are I mean, are we investor? And anything being invested isn't your decision on a lot of things. It's theirs. They, your stakeholders, are of interest. It matters to what they want. Are you, are you talking about investors like the National Science Foundation, private companies, public companies, Obviously, Shell Oil? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I realistically, they, that's way too big of a. a a page for me to be just picking one. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know investors. That what they want so what you're saying they is invest. they re they re they receive grant money. That's all you can really say for sure. No, I, I can tell you right now for a fact that people get invested by private by private investors uh, all the time. All the time. Uh, paleontology can only receive money via a grant system. They, they can't have direct money paid to them by an investor. It has to go through the Grants Commission. Because otherwise, so, otherwise they, they, they will be falsifying their own information, which is just, just like, that's, that's no go. But if it's... See, that doesn't make sense, because if it's under the scientific method that Unpaid was just talking about, then that can't happen because you can just verify it. Someone can make in, in, uh, incomplete conclusions or wrong conclusions. That's when the scientific method comes in, double check, verify, to verify findings, to go back and compare to other, other fossils that may have been found or other studies that have been done. That's, it's, it's a self-healing process, and sometimes it takes time. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes what happens is that grant money runs out, so they only get so far into the dig or something like that as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, look at that bird! Look, it's a bird! Hey, Sean, do you know that they had the hip bones backwards on dinosaurs for about 80 years? Are you serious? Yeah, they had him pointed the wrong way. No and wonder once all they the inverted dinosaurs them, walk funny. <laughs> yeah, once they inverted them, it totally changed the way they perceived how they stood. Yeah, they didn't stand upright like they did in the old 1930s movies. No, well, the 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 bird-hipped ones didn't stand upright like that. Yeah, they were like a Segway. <laughs> they, they, ha they had uh, rotator cuffs on their hips, like our, um, uh, almost the same as our arm does, but it doesn't go the full 360. Did you know they call big-time investors dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> It's called old money too, isn't it? Yep. Wow. The thing is, when you find a few bones that resemble bones that have already been found, you can start making logical links saying, okay, these look similar, so they may be the same thing. Well, let's try jockeying them around into that same configuration, double check, uh, see how everything complies with what we know already. Well, then other bones are found, and and it's it's a continuing process. This is not something that is finished. Nobody's ever saying paleontology is done. We got a long way to go. 
Yeah, it's just like any other science. It keeps going and going. And as we know more, we gain a greater understanding of how things work and how they did work and how they were functioning in the past and how we are functioning now and how they will function in the future. Paleontology you can't wiggle your independent variable. Oh, no. Huey, really? Did you have to bring that in? Sorry, I couldn't resist it. It's pseudoscience is what it is. I got a variable you can wiggle. Yeah, yeah and it's independent too. Oh, so we got the issues. <laughs> Sean, is it, that? we came to you. Remember, mm -hmm. we came to you. So who's got the issues, us or you presenting us? Oh, I have issues big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know. I'm oh, by far the worst. Present them. Oh, no, I'll get kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have rights and wrongs. Yeah, and sometimes wrong's not right. <laughs> Absolutely. But the whole deal... Drinking a beer? It looks yeah, like it sure looks like it. I couldn't could work that one out. I think it's for scale. I, well, I just did all my research on YouTube, so I know I'm right. Well, there you go. I guess that's the end of the argument. <laughs> oh, that, that's it. Shut it down. We're gone. We're done. <laughs> yep. There's, There's nothing, dinosaur nothing to be... Hey, YouTube told me so, guys. <laughs> YouTube told me. <coughs> Not NASA. But see, this... YouTube. <laughs> but, this is, but this is why... This is why when something is found, like, for example, that 90% complete T-Rex... Uh, skeleton. That's why it's such a huge thing. That's why science goes, holy shit, and starts popping off fireworks when something like that happens. Because then they see a, a, a bigger chunk of the larger picture. And yeah, then they and go back to all the ones that are only 50 and 40% complete and go, okay, so that bit didn't go there and that bit didn't go there and we move that one around. That's what it's ah, like. Now it looks right. And then it starts to make you wonder how much was actually lost in some of the digs that were done in, you know, in the early years and stuff like that. How much uh, stuff was trampled on and stuff. And the idiots that used to use dynamite to blast away the rock to dig in to find a fucking dinosaur. They only wanted a bit. They just need a bit of proof to carry back. Catching oh, well, the tooth you can... in the face is a <laughs> backlash. Yeah, you can go to Morocco and buy bits and pieces of dinosaur. Push, 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 push. I heard that. Okay, so hang on, let me see if I, I found a dinosaur. What'd you do with it? Threw it away. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if it says like the amount of fossil record. Which dinosaur? I don't know. It's a whole list of them. <laughs> yeah, because there's 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 quite a lot of them. Yeah, apparently. And the majority of them we've not even found yet. Most likely, that's the current consensus. Uh, well, like Dreadnoughtus, it was only found like 15 years ago. They never knew it existed. Dun, dun, dun. Um, well, gentlemen, I got to actually help off. I got to be up in four hours, so I will bid you farewell. Sir, thank you. <coughs> See you, Sean. Adieu. Adieu. Yeah, Sean. When you say you know see you, Sean, it makes me feel like you guys are talking to me. I'm like, damn, why is everyone leaving me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Bye, Mr. Smith. Thank you. No, I'm just Better, Sean. Did anyone, did anyone hear what Chris Berry said on Jose's Hangout? It's astonishing. Mm, I didn't. What did he say? He said a lot of things. You know when he was showing the picture? What's the name of that mountain? Mount Rainier. Oh, God. Which? 
Oh, is he saying the the Beto, the shine shit? Yeah. Hey, look, he, we've he even got an actual real photograph of a dinosaur. Are those clouds above the peak of the mountain? And he said, I can't tell. For fuck's oh, yeah, sake. He, oh, I debated with him about that. I crushed him. It, it's embarrassing how bad it was. He's got this argument somewhere else. I can't remember the guy's name. P-Brain, I think. Oh, jeez. Being... You've gone from worse to worse. If, if the peak of the mountain is above the clouds and the sun is above the, the mountain peak, then it can project a shadow downwards onto the clouds. Yeah, no one's denying that, but that's, that's not the case in point. We're talking yeah, about something else. So how do you see that? the shadow under the cloud if it's on top of the cloud? Are those clouds above the mountain? He said he couldn't tell. Well, put it this way. It's so bad that Bebop for Life did a uh, his own observation. I can go show you guys right now. Um, he, Yay! He did a... Uh, an experiment basically and i'll show it to you it's got to share it i just find it astonishing that somebody could just you know cover their eyes like that and go la 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 but we'll go over to the discord i'll find it through here it's so much easier uh down and uh people for life I mean, yeah, I mean, there it is so he did his own yeah. observation and he sent me these pictures. So he had one, he, this is only one of them, but he had another one where that light source was above the table. And guess what didn't happen? Well, Shadow did. Chris, yeah. yeah, Chris did try to do this experiment, but he was so dishonest. The first test, he had a paint stick hanging from essentially the clouds. So above imagine, a box. Above a box. As in, and then. What he did was he wouldn't tell you he wouldn't show the light source like B Ball for Life has has uh, honestly done here. Or like Carlos did. Or like Carlos did. And what ended up happening is I tried to explain to him, Chris, see how the shadow is very detailed and prominent in this picture. Whereas in all your observations where you're trying to depict it, the sun being high above the clouds and it being the albedo, the, the shine rate, is it's not possible because the shadow would be just everywhere. It doesn't wouldn't have a detailed line like it does. It's too diffuse. Yes. Yeah. And then here's the biggest one. You ready for this? The fucking sun is in the fucking shot of Mount Rainier. You see the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's obviously below the clouds it has to be you won't be able to see it otherwise and he's saying he can't tell if the clouds are above that mountain i, I was just just flabbing he's very disingenuous very oh come on hole come on hole tell us the real deal <laughs> he's a smeg head and I, yeah, I, 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 what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh do some more researching into this dinosaur thing because I'm not going to be able to find everything I, I've been trying to say right this second. And I'm flabbergasted that everyone thinks it's very cut and dry, nice, nice going society of people. Cause you do. Yeah, it's that, not because you do know that scientists lie their asses off too. I, yeah, well, I, don't some do, yeah. But I feel that sci um, for the most part, most scientists will be biased as fuck in their findings, especially if they're getting paid. Uh, those grants and salaries I, don't know, I didn't find anything about dinosaurs having to be a grant but that, I don't know that's why I want to research it but um, I do know scientists they're not on, under the same restrictions so do you know how much happening? how much of each what percentage of each grant winds up in a scientist's pocket why would I know that I'm just giving you my opinion just take a, take a wild guess a lot a lot, a lot. Cause just just throw a random I'm, guess okay, out I'll there. Okay. Put it this way. I can guarantee you that 90% of the scientists that we're speaking of have an idea, have a study, experience, something they want to do to get their names in the books. And to do that, so, you kind of need money. And so a lot of people understand that. So, yeah, if, say, you're on a project that pays very good, you may be reluctant to end that project the second you find something. And there have been many of stories where we know that they have held back from giving out information for those purposes. 
Yeah, but that's what they do. Okay, so so just as a wild guess, how much money percentage wise of a grant do you think ends up in the scientist's pocket? Compared to all the scientists on Earth, half a percent if at that I mean, you're asking me a number that's irrelevant it's to the fact of it happening. Just because and the fact that we don't know is the issue. We don't or we don't know the percentage of that are actually doing this is the issue because it is in most cases they happens. do because because to apply for a grant you have to give a breakdown of expenditures and in almost every case the the scientist that's running it they're continuing to be paid by their university or the organization that they're working for because they're on salary because they're typically tenured yeah, <laughs> so that so grant money doesn't go into their pocket it goes towards the, the expenses grant, didn't say the grant money but they are make again they if they prolong a study then they are in full employed for longer or something else if they have opportunity to get their names in a book or this or that there are a hundred different other reasons i'm not saying yeah. them all and i'm not saying oh, all of science at all but it does happen so to act like yeah, i would agree doesn't. with you in a sense if they're in the cut corners perhaps for fame and fortune yeah however the peer review process weeds all of that out you you, you mm -hmm. have to get through that. the peer review process is there to weed things out doesn't always yeah, I agree, but there is, you know, it still has to pass. I, mean, the, I was just yeah. reading, uh, uh, or watching a upload from a guy, you know, Potholder, have you ever seen him? Even when it's published, it's still up for grabs. Anyone can challenge it any time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I was listening to a guy, um, his name is Potholder. He's a YouTuber. Um, and he had did an uh, upload about the peer review process. And, man, I mean, there is hundreds of these peer review uh, establishments that are are fake that aren't credible for shit i, I, I want to speak to bob the science guy are you, are you hearing me bob are, are you talking about when you say peer review yeah, places yeah, are you yeah. talking about are you talking about people that publish papers yeah the in, journals in, right yeah, institutes yeah. i'm asking institutes, i'm asking sean institutes i'm asking institutes go ahead sean institutes that publicize uh people's journals or people's stuff yeah it's yeah there are there are no, those 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 have nothing to do with science. Those those are uh, the equivalent of diploma mills that yeah, Ken yeah, Hovind went to. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those. Yeah, and then other and, and nobody yeah. nobody in the industry can takes those seriously. Well, the the problem would be figuring out which ones are which. And second, cause it for is. instance, if if the majority of us in this community are looking at peer reviews. The majority of us aren't going to be able to tell unless you find something as ridiculous as what that guy was showing me. But here's the thing. But that doesn't mean that the Royal Society hasn't passed through some fucking fraudulent shit, whether they realized it or not. Can I just have a quick word with Bob? Are you there, Bob? I'm here. What's up, Bob? I understand you, you like a game of backgammon. Yes, I do like backgammon. Well, I host a backgammon tournament online twice a week if you're interested. Would you please send me the link? It's been a while since I've played, but I'd love to have a look Damn at it. Argument for backgammon, Hugh. God damn it. <laughs> you're going to type that in the chat, asshole. <laughs> backgammon's important, damn it. Yeah, backgammon's important. Um, yeah, especially if you play with a cube. I mean, that's, that's a oh, whole yeah, you game. Can use the cube. You guys are talking gibberish right now. Bob, you, you need to download a 324. Client. I, I can sort it out for you. Um, what's the best way to contact me? Are you, are you on Discord? Well, I'm on Discord, but you can have my email here. I'll put it right in the chat now. All right. Anyway, uh, Sean, your your thing about peer review is <laughs> is correct that there are. There are false falsehoods out there Bogus that just journals. do it for the money. Yeah, uh, and and the perfect example is someone like Kent Hovind. He gets his little diploma mill buddies to peer review his bullshit and then spread it amongst his his Christian faith of morons. Sorry to offend anyone in the chat, but I I, I turned away from Catholicism thirteen years ago, and uh. I have I have reasons for it. Um, oh, not Catholic, but okay. <laughs> uh, th that's the problem with the peer review process is getting actual credible sources to do the peer reviewing because a lot of scientists 
that aren't getting paid a lot of money from their university or from uh, from being an undergraduate under another scientist to help out with the study that, that are relying on the grant money to help pay their wage because they're not tenured through the university. So uh, to, to find a credible source to do your peer review is actually hard. To find a non-credible peer review source is easy. Trying to find an article. You know, a couple of years ago, there was a magazine, one of those throwaway pay to have your stuff published um, magazines, you know, journals. Mm -hmm. And there was a program on the internet that you could do kind of like that flatter theory program that many of us have seen, but you could just put the names of the investigators in it and it would generate 10 pages of gibberish with graphs. <laughs> and what they did was they actually put this thing through and submitted it for publications and they accepted it for publications. It was utter gibberish. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I always thought that was kind of fun because I did a couple of papers like that myself, just in case, you know, I ever needed them. I could say that I had, uh, I have some scientific papers, you know, in case a florist, florist asked me if I'm a real scientist. Yeah, I've got a paper right here. Go ahead and have a look at it. Is the dot .com correct, Bob, on your email address? Because it's got a dot and then there's a gap and then it's uppercase com. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, it's going to be dot .com. I mean, I put that in so that the bots don't find my email as easy. All right. I'm firing I just kind of screw them. I, 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 require, I require some intellectual input on that in order to uh, some discernment. I'm, I'm firing you off an email, Bob. If you just reply and then we, I can get you started. All right. What what server do you use, Fibs? No, it, it, Grid Gammon. All right. Yeah, I haven't played in years, but I'm going to have to sit down and try and. I, I actually wrote an article on. I wrote a couple articles. Oh, you ever cool. hear the northern? You ever hear the northern Michigan pip count? No. Go to Backgammon Galore. You'll find my article in Northern Michigan pip count. Here, as a matter of fact. Here's one. This is an article I actually wrote a few you years did a, ago. You did a backgammon video. Yeah. And it's in there. I think the Northern Michigan pip count's in there. That was a while ago, but... Let me see if I've got it here. That was actually my first real interest in um, common core math. I developed the Northern Michigan pip count, which turned out to be common core math. It's just kind of a fun thing. I used to really enjoy it. I used to play on fibs a lot with people all over the world. Yeah, I played on fibs. Yeah, I had a rating of 16 or 1700, as I recall. Nothing special. Make Tartaria great again. Yeah. <laughs> Your videos are brilliant on that. Build the wall. Build the wall. <laughs> you know what the you know what the fruit you know what the uh, imperial fruit of Greater Tartaria is? Oh, I don't know. A dumpling? The impeach. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Don and the giant impeach. Yeah. Where'd that damn thing go? Oh, I know what uh, I know where it is. Uh, I've actually been it. watching. I've actually been watching Stephen Colbert. Uh, <laughs> just, no, no, it's just John, for his little bits on on Donald Trump. John oh, Oliver is even even better. Yeah, the Colbert but, is but, great. Yeah, he takes the absolute piss out of the president, and I love it. Well, the problem that I run into is that I, I refuse to be involved with politics on the channel. And uh, sometimes that really hurts. I mean, mm, cause really. You want to get it out, don't you? Well, I figured out what would cause the Republicans to, to, to hold Trump accountable for his actions. 
It would be Trump becoming a Democrat. Huh. Here's the article. Well, here's the video. I'll see if I can find the actual article I wrote. I think it might even be listed in there somewhere. Hey, Sean, how many tabs have you got open? A lot. <laughs> <clears throat> Very you know what else I have here, Sean? A that? fountain pen. I like pens now. I'm not Good. against pens anymore. All right, the link to my article on Backgammon Galore is actually in there. So it's in the description of that video. Actually, I liked how Bob brought out the fountain pen to uh, debunk Riley's misinterpretation of the scientific method. I've debunked that so many times. I mean, it's not even really worth my time anymore. If he wants to know about the scientific method, he can go back on one of the four different videos I've done on it. But yeah, you know, the fact, sorry to interrupt, the fact that I have that experiment in a book for a four-year-old. Yes. That, that just like the moment I oh, saw you mean it. His egg went, float experiment. Yep. And I think the four-year-old would probably understand it better. You know, the saddest thing about Riley is that he put up some of his schoolwork when he was like 12. And he actually had a pretty good grasp of earth science at the time. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Uh, no, he, cause it's, he knows it's, it's not flat. Well, I know he knows it's not flat. He's a Poe. Uh, I think Phuket is a Poe as well. But Phuket, I think, is a little on the crazy side. Uh, right. Nick, Nick thinks a bit cuckoo. Yeah, Nick is a. Who? He's a character, all right. I don't get Phuket, a Phuket word. word. See, I don't. I've never heard him. Nick, you haven't never heard a Phuket word? I know. I've heard of him, uh, but I never watched him. Not once. Uh, oh, watch God, Blue Marble gonna... Science. Huh? Yeah. No, Blue huh. Marble Science. He's not crazy. He's a decent guy. No, old. he he just did a video on <laughs> Nick. He did? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that was the one that I pissed him off on because I released the same video uh, eight hours before he did. He had to redo it. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. You know, the only other time that that ever happened is remember the Monterey Bay observation where they flashed the mirror and the thing looked like it was 40 feet above the water? Oh, damn, um, the water can. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Greater Sapi and I released a video on exactly the same thing within, like, 20 minutes of each other. Brilliant. You know, <laughs> I was out driving in the UP, and my video was uploading, and uh, he released his video about the same time. You know, we both look at it like, shit. You know, it's like showing up to the prom wearing the same dress as somebody else. You know, it just doesn't, doesn't work out well. I bet your mustache looks good in a dress. It did, actually. It was a purple uh, evening gown. And we were doing a <laughs> womanless beauty contest for the American Cancer Society. The only problem was is my hair kept flipping around my eyes and then my dress would blow over my head. It's tough being a woman. And uh, I was afraid I was going to hit a phone pole as I was driving to the thing and get hauled into my own ER wearing drag. That way I never let that one down. It's harder to be a woman when you got a beard that hangs down to your navel. That's true. Or, or but it's navel, extra support or, or, for the brassiere. Or, or navel with the beard. Yeah, well, it's extra support for the brassiere if you tuck it in and kind of tie it. <laughs> Gives you that extra support. It lifts and separates. It lifts and separates. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is going downhill. This has gone downhill. Yeah. We were on paleontology, and now we're talking about dresses and beards. Yeah, <laughs> and for the record, it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, not this. Well, I, just finished, I used to uh, go to the, I used to go to the drag races every weekend, but then I got tired of watching them trip over their dresses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I just finished my make Tartaria great video tonight, and then I just am uploading and doing a doing a thumbnail on my next Charonism one on Moon Rocks. That'll be out tomorrow morning. Wait, wait, wait. Did did Jerem find a moon rock and then claim it, it? He didn't know what it was. No, what happened was, you know, a couple of years ago they had that big scandal where they had that fake moon rock in the Netherlands. <laughs> oh, the petrified yeah. wood. Yeah. yeah, it was piece petrified wood. 
And, you know, like Jaren is saying, well, there you go. See, they're fake rocks. I says, well, no. And I got a website here that's got every a picture and a description of every single moon rock that was ever brought back. Including all the gravel that Neil Armstrong brought back. Yeah, the stuff in his private? Yeah. It would be uh, no. There were no fake moon rocks out there. There's bound to be thousands of them, isn't there? On them? Well, yeah, I'm sure there's fake moon rocks out there, man. But, uh, you know, the you know how you can tell it's not a fake room, moon rock? When it's, the it when, when it's the government of the United States gifting it to the government of your nation, that's probably not a fake moon rock. When it's an ambassador giving it to a freaking private citizen, gives a private citizen a baseball-sized rock, when there are only 22 kilograms of moon rock in existence on the earth. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is the only moon rock I have ever seen in my life. If it says made in Taiwan stamped on the side, it's probably not a moon rock. Yeah. I mean, it was a red moon rock. How yeah, many red moon rocks look, have you seen? The ones I've seen are green. That looks like well, hashish. Yeah, that's basically what it is. A moon. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. It's a no. Well, you know why they wouldn't let me go to the moon and, and, and hashish yeah. and uh, keef. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What do you find them on the moon? I'm going there straight away. Well, I'll tell you something. Yeah. You know why they didn't let me go to the moon with Buzz and those guys? Is you know each each astronaut got a half a kilo of personal stuff that they could bring with them in the capsule, and I know what I would have <laughs> had. <laughs> so, you know how they, you know, the, you know how they quarantined them when they came down because they didn't know if there were any moon germs up there or anything. Yeah, they put it you in know, the trailer. As soon as we landed, and while the frogmen were kind of floating up and swimming around, putting that little skirt around the capsule and stuff, I'd be handing out the green face paint and the fangs to the other two guys. <laughs> So when they opened up the door to the capsules, we could oh, smell oh, oh, oh. it. would have been shot. <laughs> yeah. Planet it would have the fucking age. shot us. You're yeah, right. Man, and you know that bitch. if they came out, if they came out glowing, they would have shot them and they would have been lost at sea and there would have been a big <laughs> thing in Arlington. For all we you'd have know, seen a wet, they, they you'd have seen a wet suit right live up to its name. You'd yeah. have seen a wet, you'd have seen a wet suit live up to its name. But that's why they wouldn't let me do it. Uh, I'm firmly convinced of that. Anyone see the, the goodies episode when they went to the moon and came back as rabbits? Um, you sure you weren't on something when you watched that? The goodies? I was a little kid when I watched it. Goody, goody, <laughs> yum, yum. I don't remember that one. I remember that. Oh, gosh, I don't remember many of the episodes. I remember the cat. Oh, yeah, taking down the BT tower. Take down so, the BT tower. So, I'm reading. That this is in the first two sentences of this uh, website I found. It says investing in fossils and artifacts. It says um, fossils and artifacts currently qualify with an ever increasing demand and international appeal for trans transept or transcedes tra transcedes in all countries languages and cultures the, this cannot be said for many of the collectibles such as an american pop culture items with respect to Chinese, japanese or german collectors while with fossil collecting investments in collectibles which regard to the rare and finest examples not only are deposits uh, becoming rapidly exhausted and other factors have come into play, helping make acquisitions for fresh discoveries from the ground as extinct as the fossils themselves. It's like literally saying that it's like, huh? it says, finally coming into the mainstream market, evidenced by a surge in major international history and auctions. This is, we were talking about the, the dinosaur stuff earlier, and someone said something about, you can, oh. only, you can only, paleontologists only receive grants, but, I mean, if it, <laughs> If fossils are being driven by this investment market, uh, sell. Uh, Sean? Yes. Uh, okay, so you've heard of rogue scientists before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's rogue paleontologists, and what they do is they go out and they find other paleontologists' dig sites, and they steal shit from them, bring it back, and sell it to fossil investors. 
who this want it for their I private want, collections. This is why I want to look into it more, because I would like to find out about that stuff. I know about all that. But that's like the, what do you call it? Grave robbings. Like the, yeah. Uh, the pyramids and shit. The Egyptians. And yeah. it's just as ethical. Yeah. But, but this is what I, I, I like to hear from you, Sean, is that I'm going to look into it further, not just take it on face value. I, I was, I'm telling you now, I was playing devil's advocate that time. Like, I, mean, I said that earlier, but I mean, I do feel a certain way about it, but at the same time, I don't fucking know enough to not to go look it up. <laughs> I don't want to figure it out. I want to see what the hell's going on. Because, I mean, any, if, you, if you have questions in any topic, you should be interested in knowing both ends of it. I don't care. If Neil deGrasse Tyson says it, it must be true. <laughs> Do you know Isaac Newton died a virgin? I didn't know him. Have you ever seen him? He was math debating all the time. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come to a spot in the this, in this stream where I think we're going to go ahead and end it. Um, yeah, I'm four hours deep and I didn't even try. Damn, I ranted a long time, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. I ranted long enough that the stream seemed short because I just got everyone here. Yeah, you didn't need Aaron. You did it yourself. I love ranting. The whole point, that was the whole reason I even started streaming. I had shit to say and I couldn't on another, someone else's panel. Sun will be coming up for you soon, won't it? Does that make you rant and flat earth? Say again? Uh, Does that make you ranty flat earth? No. Well, we 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 both know it's a globe, but that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah, Randy, the best globe globe proponent of the flat earth. <laughs> I think we need to. He needs to invest, or we need to start a pay or uh, what do you go fund me for some sunscreen for him. We can call it. Oh, Kim for his Kim trail Let's call burns. Kim screen, Kim screen, or something like that. Because I'm sorry, man. I tried to tell. Well, somebody. no, you just. All you got to do is spray spray vinegar in the air, and it takes care of the chemtrails. I tried to. Didn't tell you them. know that? I yes, I saw that. Come on, man! I saw him. I said, hey, uh, "If those were chemtrails, wouldn't they like be able to like get past your glasses?" And he was like, uh, "They're heavy," and I don't know. I'm like, "What the fuck?" It has to be apple cider vinegar. Hey, Bob, oh. Bob, I did see that video. Um, you have to watch to the end, but they said they were joking. And if you look at the comments, it's it's ninety five percent of people just saying you're an idiot, but because they didn't watch it to the end. I thought uh -huh. that was funny, ironic as well. Irony. Yep. Has anyone seen the one with the woman and the sprinkler and there's rainbow colours coming out? Yeah, yes. I've seen that. Yep. Yeah, seen that. That's, <laughs> That's ridiculous. That one. I don't know. It's. It's fun. I enjoy myself with this. I truly do. That could be just a joke, huh? All right. Let's go see why this isn't working right. All right. You know, I don't like to make fun of the mental ill or anything like that, but, you know, I think the thing that really gets me is when you sit down and try and share your delusions with others and, and recruit them for it, you're fair game. Yes, I have an issue with the, the flat earth content creators that know it's flat and know anyone speaking of the globe is a lie. They are the snake yellow salesmen. They're the ones you have to worry about. Well, of course, there's no way to know, is there? You, you can surmise but that's about it right you, you you can't say for sure that they don't believe it and they, they're just, just you know on a scam well, i think mark Sargent is a charlatan but i can't prove that but i think uh, i can tell you right now yeah. nathan uh i wouldn't i want to say quantum eraser but i think he's that crazy that he thinks he's that like a god like honestly he's, like he's made up a new science and he's convinced it works that's where he's at um bro sanchez he knows uh, Aunt Riley, I'm positive he knows. And, I mean, think about it. If, if I think QE is, honestly, I think QE honestly believes he's smarter than the rest of the scientific community. No, 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 the world. 
Do you guys ever look at QE's? Do you guys ever look at QE's um, Facebook page? Nope. Don't care. <laughs> I do. He's talking about. He's talking about you know his time in the army, which is fine, and apparently he's indicating his rank specialist. And then he's got something where he's retiring. You know he's leaving the service and he's wearing captain's bars. And I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just it's something that's confusing me a little bit because I don't know how that. He was a. A specialist captain. A specialist captain. That's called a warrant. That's a chief warrant three. They drink and they know things. That's oh, so full of shit. Well, no, I mean, the thing about it is, is it's almost looking like stolen valor. And that's oh, something no. that kind of irritates me a bit, you know? Ah, uh, like JM Truths. Jam right. Truth claimed to be a medic, and I don't have a problem with that. I was a medic at one time. There's nothing wrong with being a medic, but uh, mm. kind of irritated. Kind of irritated me to see that. I just didn't think that was, Honest. shall we say, kosher. I mean, it's it's yeah, that's something that kind of that generally gets a response from me. Hey, uh, Bob, you're you're a you're an educated man. To actually have a master's in any form of tertiary study, you have to have done a thesis, correct? Most of the time, yes. Theses generally come in master's and PhD level. I have a doctorate, and I didn't have to do a thesis for mine, but mine's a superpower doctorate. I'm, I'm in medicine. Hey, yeah. So uh, the 10-minute warning. Keep on. Ah, thanks, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, because, uh, okay, in all honesty, would would a person with a PhD or a Bachelor of Science turn around and go, science is fake? No. Okay. I can't think of, for the life of me, how he can justify that. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I truly don't. I had someone say to me that their friend, or I guess not a friend, or a friend, or used to be, I don't know, was a, um, she was an astronomer or one of you, ast what are you astrophysics? No. Something to do with the stars, studying them, all that shit. And, uh, yeah, cosmologist. I don't remember. I have it on cosmetologist, <laughs> astronomer, <laughs> astrologer. I have it on recording. I'm just stoned, so I don't remember. <laughs> an, astro but, uh, an astrologer. But just say no, Sean. It, it was definitely someone qualified to know what she said. The math. <laughs> and she said, even she says it's flat. And she said she was going to try. She was trying to work for CERN as well. Um, those people, what? Those are by far the worst snake oil salesmen, and I feel they're the ones who are open game. I, I, I mean, do, does this person know that the Hadron Collider has to try and not get disrupted by gravity? Well, if her friend gravity doesn't is exist. qualified it's not to know course. math, and she wanted to work at CERN, and she knows it's flat, then it must be flat. Uh, uh, the, if, if she turned around and said the earth is flat, they would have kicked her out, no matter the discrimination clause against them. They would have taken the suit, is what you're saying? Or at least nobody would have yeah. sat, sat with her at the lunch table. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she turned into the Higgs boson. <laughs> hey, I got banned from... Uh, 24-7 Discord today. Awesome, I got, Bob. I got server banned again. Awesome. That's they just a badge of honor at this point. Uh, well, it's always been, been a joke. Been I've muted it from there. If you haven't been kicked from there yet, then, I'll, then you must be a, in the cult. 
Yeah. Well, this is you're the not, third or fourth time I've been enough. kicked. The administrators keep putting me back in because they really want somebody there that can actually talk and get conversations going. But, uh, well, I'm going to head out, guys. So uh, you have a good uh, morning, whatever. All righty. Uh, well, it's it's Sean. Good morning for you. Uh, it, it's just want, two. I'm about to do pretty much going to be ending in a second. Did you want to say some closing um, words real quick? Or? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Go ahead. You go first. Oh. Yeah, I like, um, to, pick, yeah. I like to pick randomly. No, um, so everyone, thank you very much for the chat. It's, it was uh, great fun today. I had, a, I had some laughs and, and everything. So thanks again. We'll see you uh, probably tomorrow or some other time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, sir. Toodaloo, buckaroo. Uh, Just hit 420 here. I hate you all. <laughs> you want to go ahead, Bob? Do you have anything coming up? Uh, let's see. I got the Jaronism moon rack thing tomorrow. Uh, got a court hearing on Thursday. I don't know. I'll probably figure out something cool to do on Friday. And I've got the weekend to make some videos, so I'm going to get caught up. How do you guys like the new um, Simon Dan style videos with me just kind of sitting at the desk rather than the green screen? You guys, have yeah. any? they work. They definitely work. Are they nicer than the other ones? They're a little more homey? Yes. All right. Yeah, and, and, but I think you shouldn't necessarily discount the some of these green screen videos either because they both have their place. Well, I've, I've, I've used a combination of both, to be honest with you. I've had some shots on green screen that are very specific to green screen. But I kind of like this relaxed version. Yep. It's kind of fun. Keep doing it. It ain't uh, it ain't doing you wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate the feedback. Anybody want to see anything particular from me? Midget porn. Uh, Lots of midget porn. Oh, well, we got midget <laughs> porn, but the problem is I can't do that. Because he's not a midget. Yeah. And YouTube. Damn. No. But I'm on like one. What is going on here? Uh, who else was? Uh, Digital Demonic, you got anything? Uh, th this has been an excellent conversation. Um, I must say, from from your story at the start to to the things we discussed, which which weren't around flat Earth as much, just a change. Yeah. And, and, and the input from you was good. Yeah. Well, it's you're a good bunch of people to just sit down and chat with. Intelligent conversation on a variety of things. Yeah, I like to. I don't like the whole. From CERN to midget porn, you know? Hey, hey he goes everywhere from me on my stream. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there is no hole left out. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, that hole filled. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. We got to digress. Uh, who else? That worked. Q. Q, and only Q can prevent forest fires. Yeah, well, um, thank you for hosting, Sean. That's about it. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, I'm paid. Um, nah, I don't think you want me to go there. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, I almost forgot, Sean. I have a Patreon now. Send me. Money. <laughs> I uh, I'm about two thirds of the way through this bottle of brandy, and and I have aside from sitting here touching myself in odd places with a shrimp fork, I don't think you guys want to know anything else. TMI. So, Terry, please, <laughs> please have. I can't. I can't top back. anything after Shills no, puts no, his no, bit no, in. No. Don't top it. Just I'm still thinking the shrimp fork, man. <laughs> that just sounds uh, wrong. Great, yeah, great show, Sean. I, even though I missed most of it, so I'll just assume the rest of it was good. Will you be doing an after show? Oh, I could do an after show if anyone's interested. I'll, I'll stop by, but I'm going to bed pretty soon. But yeah, I'm in. Gotta, I got to cut on out here, too. I've got everything all uploaded. I'm in. For any, for any of the ones that 
an adjust to our time zone can come over. <laughs> well, scheduled? it's... Are you scheduled to... I'm at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm sch yeah, I'm scheduled in another... Oh, what time is it now? I think 4 o'clock. Time to be about freaking lunch. 5 o'clock. About another 4 hours anyway, so... Five o'clock for just, you. I'm just, I'm just filling in time. Yeah, it's only five o'clock here. That's ridiculously early in the morning. <laughs> PM. Yeah. PM. Bob. <laughs> PM. Not a, not a.m. He's PM. in that mythical land of Australia. He's across the other ocean. And the other, <laughs> other day, you know, the other, you know, the day in the, ahead of us, the future. That's yeah, where it's are. Wednesday. It's Wednesday today. Yeah. Just so you want to know. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm yeah, sure Brandy. I'm, uh, sharing. And he said, "Booze, fine booze." Where it is? Oh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna put your. I'll put your uh, channel in the in the chat so people can find your channel. Go and subscribe and listen to the Aussie perspective. Come Australian. Yeah. It's working for me. Go to my Patreon. Send me money. <laughs> Bob over here wants some fucking money. Go to the Patreon. That's right. I got to get the... Here. No, look, man. I'm not kidding. Look at this shit. Bob is starting I to sound like Nathan see. Oakley. I want you to see this. <laughs> look at that. Oh, man. Uh, you see that? Oh, jeez. the rifles. I, I, I need, like those. I need slippers. I need slippers, man. Uh, hey, use one of those rifles. You get some slippers. <laughs> I somebody actually want to buy one of them. What the fuck today. did you do to Homer? Oh, I'm going to bring you some slippers there if you want them, Bob. They don't fit me. Well, are they size 12? I got some size 16s. Mm. Oh, way too big for me. I got 12 and a half. Some, a mouse got my like damn you? slippers or something or other. No, you just get the size my 16s. Wife bought me those things. And you stuff a little bit of newspaper into the toes. They'll fit just fine. What the hell are yeah, you people yeah, doing yeah. with your damn shoes? Seriously. Bob, how the f you're a smart man. How the fuck does that happen? <laughs> I think a mouse got it. To be honest with you, are you, are you uh, you're serious. You're a mouse, for real? Yeah, no, I I'm, I shit you not. Like I think a mouse like, got it. You're like it's not like your, your dog scratching terror. <laughs> no, no, you need to watch Sean Woods Mouse Trap Monday. That's a great great channel. Is. I have a feeling we do not want to do that. What Mousetrap Monday? Yeah, I'm scared. So, so, so I, no, it's I, it's actually mouse traps. Yeah, but uh, hit, uh, going off on what? Yeah, it works great. Yeah, if you want to learn how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, just check them out. Does it show it happening? Yeah. That's gross. Do you see the little mouse spirit leaving it when it runs in the trap, like that one video where there's a little, there's a little. In his older, in his older videos, yes. In his newer videos, YouTube's been cracking down on him, but not the Asian bastards that have been doing the same thing, only worse. Jesus uh, Christ! So most <laughs> Asian bastards. No, these fuckers. No, they'll they're abusive, man. What they'll do is they'll set up electric traps and shit, electrocution traps, and they'll throw the the rats and mice into them. Um, you can see them throwing you, the the rats and mice do, in. Do, do so yeah, know, they're bastards. Do you know how? Um, reptile owners feed their large snakes. Yeah, with small children. But, uh, you, you once you upgrade to, to actual rats, some snakes don't like cold animals. They like them warm, which means they had to yep. have been alive. So, yep, I guarantee you about ninety percent of large, I mean six foot plus snake owners, have to knock out a rat somehow. <laughs> I've seen many ways. Yep, but to see them hit this wire mesh and start smoking, okay, we got a problem here, pal. No, that's true. That's very true. You I know, think, I, I'm. I think, but I, I, I don't like TV. rats. I'm. I'm not a fan of rats. But you know what? There's no need to be cruel to them. But but if isn't it cruel to watch a guy randomly <sighs> trap mice and rats? Isn't that the same thing? Nope. Nope. Why? Because quite often he get he uses live trap uh, live catch traps. Well, that's stupid. What about his fucking safety? What about his safety? Oh well, I'm not releasing any animal from a, an, any trap alive. He he takes them out in the woods. Why? So they can run back. 
He would jump back into the exhaust, the manifold of his <laughs> truck, <laughs> get right home. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I think everyone said hey, peace. Yep, okay. All right, I'm going to get out of here now. Did you guys see Paquette and his scorpion the other day, man? I used to have a scorpion. His, his wife caught it, and he let it go down by the stream. He actually did a really nice job with a little nature photography. I recommended that he maybe switch from Flat Earth over to that because he seems to know more about scorpions than he does, you know, the world he lives Reality. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is somebody taking over this stream, or are we jumping over to Zoom? I think you guys are gonna pop. I don't know. What are you guys doing? I'm trying to, or I'm just gonna say it. I'm sick of typing. Um, asshole Rex, uh, you have to knock out a rat first of all. I didn't say mouse. I said rat because if you don't, they will bite and scratch your snake. And I'm sorry, a snake worth eight thousand dollars. The last thing you want is its eye getting scratched out. With that said, guys, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Thank you guys for on the panel. I do appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And with that said again, I will talk to you guys for a half a second. Um, again, I do appreciate you guys being here. I didn't get too many questions, but it's fine. But or from the chat, but you know, most of you guys have been here. You've heard my story. Uh, this is mostly for people that don't. Put it in the comments if you have a question. Um, I'm gonna do another stream like this. I'm gonna try to get Jose to come on. Um, and it will be a part three. Um, basically, there's so much to be said for my time at Flat Earth. Um, and now is, which is probably have more to say about now, um, that, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. I still need to learn a lot more things. Um, more importantly, I, I do feel that there are some people that I know that are flat earthers that are looking for truth and understanding. And, uh, hopefully they hear the, the truth and understanding of things here and can come up with a better conclusion than flat earth with zero evidence. Um, it's to the point now we know it's not flat and the people that believe it's flat um i be honest with yourself fuck talking to anybody just try that for once and and verify for yourself what's real what actually happens versus what these content creators are telling you and you're just repeating right um I'll be back in tomorrow. It's going to be a, a late one again. I got practice to tomorrow, so I don't expect it to be an early one. Um, but I have definitely got the schedule down so I know when and where. Uh, basically, Mondays, Wednesdays, it's going to be either I, I won't live stream or they'll be late. B, uh, and those will be the late night BS live streams. Or they'll be um, our Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It'll probably be around the five, my West Coast time, five o'clock. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I'm going to try to start doing the early ones, the noon ones again. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to be at. And a little bit more structured. I got a couple of ideas. I, I've already said them uh, before. But uh, yeah, uh, Discord stuff. Uh, if you haven't joined, the link's in the chat. Um, go down. Uh, most of the people that are on my panel that have content, they're down in my description. Go check them out. Uh, yes, there are flat earthers there too because I, I do feel that you know, regardless, truth is the truth, no matter who's telling it. It's up to you to to, to decide for yourselves, and I I don't want a one sided narrative. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I've heard people that were on my panel tonight not be as factual as they thought they were. Um, it happens. Um, I do it. They do it. Flat Earth does it, and uh. F the shape. Let's figure shit out. Go join my Discord, the Truth Frontline, um, and uh, a whole other stuff. Uh, get my uh, web. I know this will have my web page being created. I'm actually doing it myself. So it's gonna take a while, but it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna have all the topics, everything that I go through, and uh, breaking it down with you know more sources that I do actually find that I don't get a chance to show you guys vice versa with other information other information so when that comes up i'll let you guys know and uh shit we'll even go do a little walkthrough through it so you guys can see what you're gonna get when uh you join it 
free. Don't worry. It, when I say join it, it only asks for email. But uh, yeah, with that said, guys, I'm done ranting. Um, thank you, guys. Um, I do want to say I do appreciate um, the the people that on flat side and globe that you know are still cool there's ones that still will have a conversation with me without making this assertion that i am a shill or an agent blah blah, blah. um it's definitely one of those things that i i wasn't i thought i was ready for um and it did not really matter when i decided to leave flat earth but uh in the long run it, it definitely opens your eyes up to the type of people that you put yourself around and how they act when they when you're thinking like them versus uh, not thinking like them. And I can tell you now, uh, there's a lot less truthers than we think. Um, and hey, if I can, I'd like to, to call them out and have it so you guys can see that they're full of shit as well. So they can stop being these voices in, in, in the community that we all are in. So with that said, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you. Um, and like I said, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.